Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I know many of you have seen a lot of videos on chart patterns on YouTube and how to trade them. But most of these videos don't tell you why you should trade them and in fact why these chart patterns actually work in the market. So this is going to be one of the most comprehensive courses on chart patterns out there. Many professional traders even sell paid courses on chart patterns that are worth thousands of rupees with very little content. But guess what? This course is completely free of cost and is exclusively for educational purposes only. So share it with all your fellow traders and friends. And if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing to the channel and also enable the bell icon so that you won't miss out on any upcoming videos. Now the working of these chart patterns are quite simple. Chart patterns work by representing the market's supply and demand. This causes a trend to move in a particular way on a trading chart, forming a particular pattern. So when a trader looks at the price chart of a stock or an index, it can often appear to be completely random price movements. This is often true, yet within those price movements are patterns. So chart patterns are geometric shapes found in the price data which can help a trader understand the price action as well as make predictions about where the price is likely to go. However, chart pattern movements are not guaranteed and simply trading the chart patterns is not a sure shot way to success in the markets and it is better used alongside with other methods of market analysis. So in general, there are three types of chart patterns. There are continuation chart patterns, reversal chart patterns and neutral chart patterns. The topic of discussion in this video are continuation chart patterns. I will talk about five most common continuation chart patterns and why and how they are formed and how to trade them with the proper entry, stop loss and target setups. So if you don't know what continuation chart patterns are, as the name suggests, these patterns signal that the existing trend in the market will most probably continue or in simple terms it predicts that the market will continue in the same direction after the end of the pattern. Now most of these continuation patterns are formed as consolidations in between trends. So it's like market taking a tea break because of exhaustion and getting back to work after refreshment. We will be discussing five patterns and their subcategories. We will start off our discussion with flag patterns followed by penance, then we will talk about the ascending and descending triangles, further we will discuss about the rectangle patterns and finally we will wind up with cup and handle and inverted cup and handle patterns. Before moving on to the patterns, let me make something clear up front. It's none other than time frames. All these patterns that I am going to talk about forms in almost all the time frames from intraday to swing to positional time frames. All these patterns work better as the time frame increases because it takes more time to form and therefore more people are aware of them. Moreover, the time frame to trade these patterns will depend on your trading style, the duration you want to hold positions and your expectations. So I have already made a video on how to select the appropriate time frames to trade. So you can watch that video to know which time frame to choose depending on your trading style. Okay then, let's get started. The bullish flag or the bull flag as the name suggests forms during a bullish trend. The bull flag starts with a strong, almost vertical bullish trending move which then stabilizes and turns into a minor bearish correction with parallel tops and bottoms which are important levels of supports and resistance. Now there are three components to any flag patterns that make it. So I am going to give you a few hints to correctly identify the bull flag. We have to look for a preceding up move or an uptrend which makes a flag pole as we know that the bull flag pattern forms during a bullish trend. This means that the candles range is more bullish than usual and they tend to close near the highs. So it is a strong indication of buying interest in the market and it also signals that the bulls are dominating the market. Now after the strong move higher, the market needs to take a break. Now this can be seen as a profit booking phase where the initial buyers are looking to book some of their profits. So here's where you can expect a potential bull flag to form as the market does a pullback. Now the type of price action that is exhibited in the pullback is what separates a flag pattern from a normal pullback. 
Now what you are looking for is a shallow pullback that consists of small ranged candles compared to the earlier strong bullish move or it can be seen as a group of indecision candles after a strong bullish move. Now this tells you that the sellers are struggling to bring the price down and that the buyers are still in control. Now if you see a steep pullback with large range of candles then it's probably not a bull flag pattern. Generally this retracement ends below the 38% threshold of the original trend as indicated by the Fibonacci. So in general it may not be considered as a flag pattern if the retracement goes below 50% of the pole. Now the tighter this range the more likely the market will break out higher. Now that we have learned how to identify a bull flag we can discuss how to trade the flag pattern. So I will discuss the entry methods where to place the stop loss and how to set the targets. Now starting off with the entry criteria as it is a bullish continuation pattern we are only interested in the break above the resistance line. So you can take a long entry following a breakout of the level that is you can enter at the moment when the price breaks above the resistance trend line or you can look to buy above the high price of the breakout candle after it closes. Now the second method is to wait for a pullback or a retest back to the breakout level and then take a long entry when the price moves higher or when the price moves above the breakout candle high. Now you may be probably wondering which one is a better method. Well there's no best approach. Let's say if you enter the trade as and when the breakout happens, it could potentially result in a false breakout also. But if it is a real breakout, it's the best possible price you can get. Alternatively, if you wait for a close above the highs, you will reduce your chances of a false breakout. But if the breakout is too strong, you will end up entering at a much higher price. The same is the case with waiting for a pullback or a retest, which may not happen often if the market is trending strongly. And as a matter of fact, you will miss out on the trade completely. So it is up to you to decide your entry strategy and continue practicing it over a large number of trades. And above all, it is always recommended to confirm the validity of a breakout using volumes and other indicators. So a higher than average volume can validate a breakout most of the time as it shows the interest of the market participants. And low volume breakouts are most likely to fail. Using momentum indicators like MACD and RSI can also help you identify a true breakout. I have already made videos on all these topics, so if you want you can check them out. Let us now focus on the criteria for setting stop losses. So how to set your stop loss when trading the bull flag pattern. Now you don't want to set your stop loss at obvious levels like supports and resistances, swing highs or lows etc. And why is that? Because you can get your stop loss 100 easily. It is as obvious a level to you as it is for others including the smart money. So how do you get a proper stop loss setup? It's simple, your stop loss should be at a level that if crossed invalidates your trading setup. So what are we trading here? We are trading a bull flag and the pattern becomes invalid when the price breaks and closes below the bottom trend line support. So you have to keep your stop loss below this particular support level. But there are still chances of long wicks which can take out your stop loss and then move higher in the desired direction which can be pretty annoying. So to be extra safe, you can give your trades more breathing space by setting your stop loss a particular distance away from the market structure using an indicator like ATR. So once you identify the swing low of the bull flag pattern, set your stop loss one ATR below the swing low level. And now let's learn how to set target for bull flag patterns. Now there are many ways you can cash in your winners. And one of the most common approaches is to have a predetermined profit target based on the length of the flagpole. This method is also known as the price projection method. Let's measure the length of the flagpole from the bottom of the bullish price move to the top of the resistance level and then project this length from the breakout point above the resistance trend line. And this will be your profit target in the future. An alternate method is to choose to trail your stop loss until the market takes you out of the trade. Why is this a better option? Think about this. The bull flag pattern usually appears in a strong trending market or just after it breaks out of a range. In such market conditions, there is a lot of potential for the trend to continue and the only way to ride it is to trail your stop losses. 
Now the question is how to trail your stop loss in the best possible manner. Well, you can use a tool like moving averages or Chandler stop to trail your stop loss and only exit the trade if the market closes beyond it. Moreover, it is much better if you use a combination of both the projection method and the trailing stop loss method so that you can predict the future move beforehand using the price projection method so as to lock in part of your profits there and then ride the rest of the position using the trailing stop loss and thereby not impacting your psychology and avoiding any potential losses. Now moving on, in the market there are numerous opportunities that are available for trading bull flags. But if you were to ask me to select a few, I would choose 4 different scenarios to trade with a bull flag so that my risk to reward is satisfactory. Now these 4 scenarios includes number 1 the formation of bull flag during a level breakout which is followed by a primary pullback. The second scenario is when the flag formation occurs during an uptrending market which further signals a trend continuation. The third scenario is when bull flags occurs inside a range market and the final case is when the bull flag occurs in a downtrend signaling a trend reversal. Now the entry, target and stop loss criteria are the same for all these cases so I won't be discussing them individually for each case. Let us take a look at the first case. This happens when the market breaks out of a range and then does a pullback for the first time. This is one of the best times to trade the bull flag pattern. And why is that? Because when the market is in a range, it will eventually have to break out. And besides, the longer it stays in a range, the harder it will break. So what we are concerned about here is a resistance breakout where we can expect a bull flag to form. So when the market finally breaks out, the traders who miss the breakout move can wait to enter the market at the first indication of a pullback. These primary pullbacks usually have a shallow retracement as not many traders want to trade against the strong momentum. And this presents a pullback trade with a very high probability. So if I were to explain the process in a rather simple fashion, it would go something like this. First of all, you have to identify a range market or a market testing a resistance level for quite a while. Now let the market break out of the resistance level. Now you have to wait for a bull flag pattern to form in the form of a primary pullback. Now once you find such a formation, you can look to take a long entry on the break above the highs. Has it ever occurred to you that you think the price is too high and it would be better to wait for the price to retrace to the support or back to the breakout level before you go long. But the next thing you know, the market continues to break new highs and you are left on the sidelines regretting your decision. So have you learned something from this? To put it simply, in a strong trending market, it's far easier to buy breakouts than to wait for the price to pull back which rarely occurs. In such a market, you can use the bull flag pattern as an entry trigger. Here's how you can trade bull flags in a trending market. Now the first step obviously is to find the market trend. You can look for strong trending market with the use of moving averages. For example, for short term trades you can make use of 20 symbol moving average and for swing or positional trading purposes you can make use of 50 or 200 period moving averages. Now for this case, let us consider a 20 moving average. When the price trades above the 20 moving average predominantly and is sloping higher, we can conclude that the market trend is strongly bullish in a short term scenario. Now you have to wait for a bull flag formation to develop in the form of a pullback. Now once you identify a pattern, you can look to take a long entry. Now as I have mentioned earlier, the same entry, stop loss and targets can be used for this purpose. Predominantly, you can expect a bull flag to form after a breakout or during a strong trend. However, there are times when a bull flag pattern can form when the market is in a range and at a resistance level. So in one of my price action videos, I have talked about the concept of breakouts with build up near a resistance or support level. You can find the video on the i button if you want to learn more about it afterwards. Now the same concept applies here. A build up near a resistance level happens because there are no sellers stepping in or the buyers are willing to buy at higher prices. Now whatever is the case, this is a sign of strength and the market could break out higher. So how do you identify such an opportunity? Primarily, you have to identify a market which is in range. Then you have to wait for a flag pattern to form near the resistance level in the form of a buildup. Now as always, you can trade the break above the buildup or wait for the market to close above the resistance level. 
there is no change in the entry stop loss and target criteria for this case also now if you are probably thinking what the hell this dude is talking about just a few minutes ago you said that bull flag is a trend continuation pattern now why are we looking for it in a downtrend yes there is no denying that the bull flag is indeed a trend continuation pattern but what if i tell you that there is a way you can profit by using the bull flag as a trend continuation pattern even on a downtrend now this method has to do with the market structure so if you don't know about the market structure you can watch it from my price action playlist it's a rather simple method you have to look for a few things before you proceed first of all the price must close above the downward trend line resistance now we are talking about a break in the downtrend structure then if the price forms a bull flag above this trend line resistance hola you have got a jackpot trade what you're doing here is trading between an ending downtrend and a potential starting uptrend you can benefit tremendously if you are able to catch the uptrend from the beginning itself now the entry stop loss and target conditions will remain the same but i suggest you use a trailing stop loss such as a 20 period moving average since we are taking sort of a contrarian position just to be safe now a bear flag pattern is just the opposite of a bull flag pattern it is yet another continuation chart pattern but the bear flag signals that the market is likely to move lower so i will be quick with this one or else the length of the video will be too long and if you are able to understand everything associated with trading a bull flag then trading a bear flag is just a walk in the park you just have to flip everything you learned with the bull flag at 180 degrees and there you have it you now know bear flag pattern now here's how to identify a bear flag first you have to look for a strong trending move lower this means the range of the candles is more bearish than usual and they tend to close near the lows after the strong bearish move lower the market takes a break in the form of a pullback now the pullback should consist of smaller range candles compared to the earlier bearish move and the more tighter the range the more likely the market will break out lower now the strong bearish move represents the pole of the flag and the price consolidation during the pullback forms the flag of the pattern the flag retracement should not move beyond 50% of the pole length or else it is not considered a bear flag pattern now the entry criteria are also similar except for the fact that we will now be looking for shorting opportunities only being a bearish continuation pattern now you can look to sell when the price breaks below the support trend line but it is usually prone to fake outs so the better option is to wait for the breakdown candle to close and then enter below its low but sometimes if the breakout candle is very large you will be entering at a very low price and the risk to reward will be affected so you can either wait for a pullback or retest back to the breakdown trend line and then take a short entry when the prices start to move lower now the issue with this entry technique is that during a strong downtrending market the price won't pull back often enough and you will miss out on most of the opportunities so it is up to you to decide your entry strategy and continue practicing it over a large number of trades also make sure to validate if the breakout is real by using volumes and momentum indicators like macd rsi etc when it comes to protecting your positions you can place your stop loss at a level that invalidates your trading setup so a bear flag pattern becomes invalid if the price breaks above the resistance trend line with that idea in mind you have to keep the stop loss above the resistance trend line or to be even safer you can give the price some breathing space by keeping 180 or buffer above the swing high level depending upon your risk appetite now finally the target can be based on the price projection method or trailing stop loss method in case of price projection method you have to measure the length of the flag pole and then project it from the breakdown point below the support trend line this will give you your projected future target price for the trailing stop loss method you can make use of moving averages like 20 or 50 period moving average depending upon your trading style or you can use an indicator like chandler stop to ride your positions in case of a range breakdown or strong downtrend now it is a deadly combination if you make use of both these techniques to execute your winners 
Now the most important thing to figure out is where to find these flag patterns. You can find a bear flag during a support line breakdown which is followed by a primary pullback. Now the breakout candles represents the flag while the primary pullback forms the flag consolidation of the pattern. Now you can take a short entry as per the entry criteria of your choice when the price breaks below the flag consolidation. Now the most common place where you will encounter a bear flag is during a strong downtrend. As we have discussed earlier, we can identify the market trend using moving averages. Now the selection of moving averages will depend upon the trade duration or your trading style. For example, the 20 moving average is good enough to determine the short term trend. The 50 moving average is suitable to identify the medium term trend and the 200 moving average can gauge the long term market trend. But the most important thing is to make sure that the price stays below the moving average and is sloping downwards. Now yet another occasion to look for bear flags is in a range market, especially those where there is a build up happening near a support level. Now this build up can sometimes be in the form of a flag consolidation and you can enter a short position when the price breaks the build up and the support level. Now the entry criteria, stop loss and targets will all be the same as in the other cases but make sure that the breakout is a valid one. You can also find a bear flag at the end of an uptrend when there is a break in the uptrend structure which is accompanied by a flag pattern consolidation. Now this will help you enter a trend reversal even before it happens. Pennants are a class of chart patterns that closely resemble the flag patterns and symmetrical triangle patterns in the way they form and give breakouts. But if you were to consider a pennant and a flag as two brothers, then the pennant is the more aggressive brother due to the explosive breakouts it provides and the reward for risk it generates. Now there are two types of pennants, bullish pennants and bearish pennants. Let us focus on the bull pennants first. Now the bull pennant is a chart pattern that forms a triangle during the pullback. Now it consists of two parts. The impulse move which forms the leg or the pole of the pattern and the correction move which is formed as a result of the pullback. Now you may ask, what is the difference between a bull pennant and a symmetrical triangle? Because they both look similar. Now the answer is quite simple. The difference is in the duration of their formation. With a symmetrical triangle, you can clearly see the swings of the pattern. However, the candles of the bull pennant are too crowded and too volatile for you to see the swings. Regardless, a bull pennant is more similar to a bull flag pattern. Now, as I have cited earlier, bull pennants creates a more explosive breakout than bull flag pattern. Now, let me explain the reason why. I hope you have seen videos in which a Coca-Cola bottle is shaken and then thrown onto the ground. Now, the cap explodes and the bottle flies off. I don't want to go deeper into the physics of this. But one of the factors that triggered this event is actually the shape of the Coke bottle itself. If you try the same experiment with a coke can, you may not get the same result. Now the bottle is shaped similar to a nozzle, sill with the width of the bottle becoming narrower towards the top in comparison to a can where the width is almost equal throughout. So what's the deal? Once you shake and throw the bottle, the gas pressure builds up and the coke wants to get out and the easiest exit is through the cap. But as they head towards the cap, the width starts getting narrower. The pressurized gases inside the bottle would go into rage mode and blast open the cap. Please don't blame me for this terrible physics lesson. But the point that I'm trying to prove is that the same thing happens with buyers and sellers in a bull pennant pattern. The shrinking prices from left to right of a pennant pattern is a sign of impending volatility as both the buyers and sellers are itching to get out of the pullback. Now this can result in a rather explosive breakout. But since the bull pennant pattern is not a trend reversal pattern, instead it is a trend continuation pattern, we will only look for buying opportunities. This means that you are better off trying to use this pattern to ride on the existing trends rather than catching the bottoms. Now let us talk about the entry stop loss and target criteria for this pattern. Now starting off with the trade entry criteria, one of the most costly mistakes that traders make while trading the pennants is entering a bull pennant too early. As you know, ranging markets or even pullbacks can be challenging to enter for two main reasons. The range can overshoot or the range can undershoot. Now overshooting happens when the market is highly volatile and the prices will move beyond the trend line more often, forming false breakouts. Now undershooting is the opposite, that is the price fails to test the trend line every time. 
in case of a bull pennant we should be more cautious about overshooting due to the tight range so what would happen if you buy as soon as the breakout above the trend line happens or if you place a buy limit order above the swing high more often than not the price could easily touch your buy order and reverse back into the range forming a fake out or overshoot now this can be annoying and can result in losses so what is the key here now the ideal thing to do is to wait for the bullish breakout candle to close above the pennant line if the price makes this kind of a move it's clear that the buyers who got squeezed finally managed to break out strongly similar to the case of a exploding coke bottle so you can look to buy above the breakout candle's high price but sometimes the breakout candle will be too large and you will be buying at a very high price thereby affecting your reward to risk ratio the best move in such a situation is not to take the trade at all or you can wait for a pullback or retest back to the breakout level and then take an entry when the price starts to move higher but because of the explosive nature of breakouts from the pennants the chances for a pullback or retest are fairly dim so the best possible entry could be above the breakout candle high now validating the breakouts using volumes and other momentum based indicators can be a good practice during the pennant consolidation the volume has to decrease due to the evident shrink in volatility and the breakout has to be supported by higher than average volumes which could indicate a rise in the buying interest Now that you have learned how the bull pennant works and how to enter it, let's talk about how and where to set the stop losses when trading the bull pennant pattern. As I have already discussed, you don't want to set your stop loss at obvious levels like support and resistance, swing highs or lows, etc. because you can get stop loss hundred easily. So your stop loss should be at a level that if crossed invalidates your trading setup. Now, we are trading a bull pennant here and the pattern is deemed invalid when the price breaks and closes below the bottom trend line support so you have to keep your stop loss level below this trend line support or below the swing low level to be precise now there are still chances of long wicks due to the overshooting issues which can take out your stop loss if you keep it very tight and then the price can move higher in the desired direction which can be really frustrating so to be extra safe you can give your trades more breathing space or buffer by setting the stop loss some distance away from the pen and market structure using the atr indicator now once you identify the swing low of the bullish pen and pattern you can set the stop loss 1 atr below the swing low level and finally let's learn how to set a target for the bull pen and patterns now there are many ways that you can exit your winners and one of the standard approaches is to have a predetermined profit target based on the length of the leg or the pole of the pattern this is called the price projection method and here you have to first measure the length of the pen and leg then project this length from the breakout point above the resistance trend line now this will be your profit target you can also choose to trail your stop loss until the market takes you out of the trade now is this a better option think about this the bull pen and pattern usually appears in a strong trending market or just Just after the price breaks out of a range so in such market conditions there is a lot of potential for the trend to continue higher and the only way to ride it is to trail your stop losses now to trail your stop loss in the best possible manner you can use the indicators like moving averages or chandler stop and only exit the trade if the market closes below it moreover it is a much better option if you use a combination of both the price projection method and the trailing stop loss method so that you can gauge the potential of the move beforehand using the projection method so as to lock in part of your profits there and then ride the rest of the position using the trailing stop loss method thereby not impacting your psychology and avoiding any big losses due to price reversals now that you have learned what a pennant is and how to trade one it is essential to make a note of where to find one so what are the different types of market condition where you can find a bull pennant pattern now bull pennants can be found almost anywhere be it in uptrend range or downtrend The only thing to remember is that whenever it forms in the market the bull pennant is a bullish continuation pattern and our bias should always be looking for long trades only with that in mind let's talk about each case separately 
first you need to define what an uptrend is in terms of your trading style and time frame you trade because if you can't define a trend objectively based on your requirements then it is difficult to spot a bull pen and setup that satisfies your trading style now the easiest way to define a trend is by using a trend filter such as a moving average now you can use any moving average like 20 period 50 period or 200 period etc to identify the trend based on a short term, medium term or long term perspective. Let's say I have a medium term outlook or I am a swing trader and I make use of the 50 period simple moving average to define the trend. Now if the price is above the 50 period moving average, it means the trend is bullish for me. Then I will look for bull pennant opportunities. And if a bull pennant pattern is spotted, then you can look to take a long entry above the breakout candle and since we don't know how long the trend lasts, you can even use the 50 moving average as your trailing stop loss and we would exit only when the price closes below the 50 moving average. So here, not only do we use the 50 moving average to filter trends, but we can also use it to book our profits. Since the bull pennant is a trend continuation pattern, you might have the idea that this type of setup is unfavorable. So how exactly are we planning to trade the range market? Literally speaking, we are not trading the range market. Now what am I suggesting? Now it means that instead of trying to buy the highs and lows within the range, we wait for the range to potentially end. That is, we look for tight consolidations or buildups in the form of a bull pennant pattern which is forming near the resistance level. So the moment you see a bull pennant forming at the resistance, it tells you that the buyers are starting to dominate and an explosive breakout is imminent. You can look to enter above the breakout candle or when the price closes above the resistance and maybe you will even get a retest if you are lucky enough. Now the stop loss and the targets are same as we have discussed earlier and since there is no valid trend, you can use a tighter moving average such as a 20 period moving average if you wish to trail your stop loss. Even though the bull pennant is a trend continuation pattern, there is still a way you can profit by using the bull pennant as a trend continuation pattern even on a downtrend. Now this method has to do with the market structure. Here you have to look for a few things before you proceed. First of all, the price must close above the downward trend line resistance. Now we are talking about a break in the downtrend structure. Then if the price forms a bull pennant above this trend line resistance, you have a jackpot rate. What you are doing here is trading between an ending downtrend and a potential starting uptrend. So you can benefit tremendously if you are able to catch the uptrend from the start. Now the entry, stop loss and target conditions will be the same. And similar to the range market strategy, I still suggest you use a tight trailing stop loss such as a 20 period moving average since we are taking sort of a contrarian position. I won't go into all the details of a bear pennant. This is exactly the opposite to bull pennants. Now it is a bearish continuation chart pattern. It has a leg comprising of impulse candles with a strong bearish body followed by a tight consolidation associated with smaller candles and a contraction in volatility. We expect the price to break out explosively below the trendline support level and continue with the trend. Even though this pattern is usually found in a downtrending market, we can also spot it when the price is about to break down from a range below a support level where a buildup is set up in the form of a bear pennant pattern. You can even find it at the end of an uptrend where the break of the structure is accompanied by a bear pennant pattern. Now if I were to discuss the entry criteria, we will only look for shorting opportunities. Since the breakdown is expected to be explosive in nature, we can look to enter when the breakout candle gives a close below the trendline support. You can then short below the low of the breakout candle. In case if the breakout candle is too large and is affecting your reward to risk, it is better to drop the trade or wait for a pullback to the breakout level, which happens less often in the case of a pennant. So it is up to you to decide where you want to enter. Now make sure to validate the breakdown every time using volumes or momentum indicators or both. Now the volume generally declines during the pennant formation and it increases above average when the breakout happens. 
Now the stop loss can be kept above the swing high level of the pennant and providing one ATR buffer above the swing high can deal with the unexpected overshoots and stop loss hunting. Now the target can be kept by using the price projection method where the length of the leg is set as the target by projecting it below the breakdown point or you can adopt the trailing stop loss method by making use of suitable moving averages when you are planning to ride the trend and you only exit when the price closes above the moving average. Now moving on, we will focus on the triangle patterns, namely the ascending triangle and the descending triangle chart patterns. So let's start with the ascending triangle patterns. The ascending triangle is a bullish chart pattern that signals the market is about to head higher. Now as you can notice, the ascending triangle has a series of higher lows that approach a resistance line. Now this is a sign of bullish strength and for a few possible reasons. Now the higher lows are an indication that the buyers are willing to buy at higher prices. Now think about it. If the buyers were not willing to buy at higher prices, you won't see higher lows coming into the resistance. Now the fact that the market forms a series of higher lows tells you that there is demand even as the price continues higher. The second point is that there is a lack of selling pressure. So if there was actually a strong selling pressure, the price would not remain at the resistance for a long period. Instead, it would rather move lower very quickly. But since the price is hovering near the resistance, it means there is a lack of selling pressure even though it's an alluring level to sell. Yet another point to keep in mind is that there are a lot of buy stop loss orders that are clustered above the resistance because as the price retests the resistance every time, more traders will look to short the market and they will place their stop loss above the resistance level. In such a situation, think about what will happen if the market breaks out higher. Well, all these buy stop loss orders will be triggered and this will fuel further price advances towards the upside. So don't make this common mistake when trading ascending triangle pattern because most trading books will tell you to go short when the price is at the resistance level. But not every resistance is meant for shorting. Instead, you must watch how the price approaches it. Since you have learned that higher lows coming into the resistance is a sign of bullish strength, this means the market is likely to break out higher from the resistance. And the last thing you want to do is to go short and trade against it. I hope things are making sense. Now we will talk about the entry criteria. So how to better time your entry? Well, there are a few ways to do it. The first approach is to go long when the price breaks above the highs of the ascending triangle or above the resistance level. Now, all you need to do is to place a limit buy order above the resistance level and you will be immediately long when the price breaks above the highs. If the breakout is real, this is one of the best prices to enter. But this method is very risky and chances are it might be a false breakout. The next method is similar to the previous approach. The only difference is that you wait for the price to break and close above the highs of the ascending triangle pattern. You can enter long above the breakout candle highs once the candle closes. This method reduces the likelihood of a false breakout, but if the breakout momentum is quite strong, you will be entering at a very higher price. So if you are an experienced trader, then you can even enter the market as the price pulls back or retests to the resistance line of the triangle pattern. Now this can help you enter the trade even if you miss out of the breakout move and it offers a better entry price than waiting for the close of the breakout candle. But the issue with this approach is that the market may not give a pullback or retest every time. So it is up to you to choose the entry type that you like based on whether you are a conservative or aggressive trader with your approach. Now make sure to validate the breakout with volumes and other momentum indicators to see if there is actually an interest in the market participants to take the prices higher. Now we will learn how to set a proper stop loss so that you don't get stopped out too early. Now it doesn't matter whether you are trading the ascending triangle, breakouts, pullbacks, etc. because the concept is the same. Your stop loss must be at a location that if reached will invalidate your trading setup. Now this means if the market hits the stop loss, you will automatically know you are wrong. So a stop loss below the resistance level is not a very good idea. So where else will you place it? Think about it. What is the ideal place to set a stop loss so that if the market reaches it, 
you know the ascending triangle pattern is invalidated. Since the pattern forms higher swing lows and if the price moves below the recent swing low and forms a lower low, then we can be sure that our analysis has gone wrong. So it is exactly the place where you need to keep your stop loss, that is just below the recent swing low level. You can give the price some breathing space by adding one ATR buffer below the recent swing low. I hope it is clear. Now the third and most important point, when and where to exit your winning trades for maximum profits. Now as always, there are two techniques you can consider, the trailing stop loss method and the price projection method. The idea of a trailing stop loss is that we have no idea how long a particular trend will last. So we trail our stop loss to ride the trend as far as possible to lock in your gains as the market moves in our favor. So how do you trail your stop loss? Well, as I mentioned a number of times, you can use an indicator like moving average. For example, you can trail your stop loss using 50 period moving average for a swing trading strategy. This means you will hold your position until the market breaks and closes below the 50 moving average. Now, some of you might be wondering why 50 moving average always. Actually, there is nothing special about 50 moving average. A much better question to ask is what type of trends do you want to capture and what is your trading style? Now, for a long term trade, you can use the 200 period average. For short term trends, you can use the 20 period moving average and so on. The second method, the price projection method is a classical charting technique to project where the price will exhaust itself. So here's how it works for an ascending triangle pattern. You have to calculate the width of the ascending triangle from the highest point, which is the resistance level to the lowest point. Now add this amount to the breakout level and that's your price projection or expected target level. Now one of the issues with price projection is that the market can almost hit your target profit only to make a sudden reversal and sometimes it can reverse all the way back and hit your stop loss. So what would you do to avoid something like that happening? The best idea is to combine both the techniques that is make a trailing stop loss and price projection combo. This means if the market moves in your favor but it hasn't reached your price projection level, you can utilize the moving average to lock into your profits. So even if there is a sudden reversal, you still protect what you have and do not give everything back to the market. Now the descending triangle is yet another logical pattern and if traded correctly, it allows you to catch explosive breakout trades about to occur. This is a bearish chart pattern that shows the sellers are in control and it signals a bearish trend continuation. Now the descending triangle looks like a series of lower highs coming into an area of support. The pattern signals strong selling pressure and a lack of buying pressure. Usually when the price drops lower, more demand comes in to push the price higher. But that is not the case for descending triangle. Because as the price drops lower, there is still a lack of buying pressure. Instead, the sellers are willing to sell at even lower prices. That's why you get a series of lower highs. Now yet another point to consider is that sell stop loss orders are clustered below the support level. This is because many traders will buy because the price is at the support and they will set their stop losses below the support level since that's what most textbooks teach them. Now as more traders do it, the cluster of stop losses below the support level builds up over time and since the market moves from one area of liquidity to the other, the price is likely to break below the support and trigger all these clusters of stop losses which will increase the selling pressure and pushes the price downwards. Now being a bearish continuation pattern, the most common way to trade a descending triangle is to go short when the price breaks below the support level. Still there are important things to consider if you want to find the highest probability breakout trades. The breakdown should occur near the apex of the descending triangle. Apex refers to the tip of the triangle pattern where both the trend lines meet. Now the reason you want to short near the apex is that it is where the volatility is the lowest and the prices are squeezed. Now when the volatility decreases, chances are the price will explode out of the descending triangle and quickly move in your favor. On top of that, the more times the support level is tested, the better. This is simply because when the price tests the support level multiple times, it will attract more buyers and thereby increase the number of stop loss orders below the support level. Now this is great for a breakout trader because if the price breaks below the support, 
all these clusters of sell stop loss orders would be triggered thereby increasing the selling pressure towards the downside. Now moving on we will focus on how to trade this pattern. So how to time your entry and set your stop loss. I don't know if you have observed whenever the price falls it moves quicker than when it rises. So if you wait for the breakout candle to close below the support level, chances are the price might drop a lot and you end up chasing the market. Thus, in this case, it is preferred to use a limit sell order and enter the trade when the price just breaks below the support level. Now if you are a more conservative trader and you do not want to blindly place a sell limit order at the breakout point because the price could give a false breakout and rise higher. So it is ideal to wait for the price to confirm your bias before shorting the markets after the breakout candle closes below the support level. But there can be occurrences when you can miss the breakout altogether. What happens then? So if such a thing happens, the last thing you want to do is chase the market after a breakdown of the pattern. Instead, a better option is to wait for the price to retest the breakdown point. Now if you wait for the retest, you are entering a favorable trade location where previous support is likely to act as a resistance level. This means you have a tighter stop loss on your trade which offers a better reward to risk ratio. But sadly, pullbacks or retest don't happen very often with this pattern. Also making use of volumes for the breakout validation is a good practice. Now what about the stop losses? Straight away ask yourself, the point where the descending triangle pattern gets invalidated is when the price moves and closes above the most recent swing high level. So a good stop loss would be above the most recent swing high level and if you would like to be even safer, give it some buffer like 180R and set it above the recent swing high. Now finally, how to exit your winners for maximum profits. Now similar to every other pattern, there are two ways to exit the winning trades price projection method and trailing stop loss method in the price projection method calculate the distance between the highest and lowest point of the descending triangle now take this distance and project it downwards from the breakdown point this projected future price point is where you exit your trade after you enter a breakdown of the descending triangle pattern you can also use the price projection technique to decide whether it's too late to enter a trade or not. That is, if the price is close to reaching its projection, there's probably not much reward left in the move and you might want to skip the trade. Now the second method is using trailing stop losses and unlike the price projection technique, a trailing stop loss does not have a fixed profit target. Instead, you trail your stop loss as the price moves in your favor so you can ride the entire trend. Now you have to decide on the type of trend you want to capture, whether it's a short term, medium term or long term trend and you trade your stop loss with the appropriate moving averages. For example, a 20 moving average can be used for a short term, 50 period moving average for a medium term and 200 period moving average for long term trends. Then exit your trades when the price closes beyond or above the moving average. So if you want to capture a price swing in the market, the price projection technique makes sense. And if you want to ride trends in the market, then trailing stop loss works best. Now moving to our fourth category of patterns, the rectangle patterns. The rectangle formation is a classical chart pattern established by horizontal lines, which represents the important support and resistance. Now this is a continuation pattern that forms a trading range during a pause in the current market trend. It is quite easy to identify the pattern because it has at least two comparable highs and two comparable lows. These highs and lows can be joined to make two parallel lines that form the top and the bottom of the rectangle. Now a rectangle formation shows a period of indecision between sellers and buyers as they take turn throwing punches at each other but neither of them have the dominance over one another. So the rectangle patterns are also known as trading ranges or congestion areas or consolidation zones. In this case, we are talking about continuation patterns. So we expect the price to break out and continue with the original trend. So in that sense, there are two types of rectangles. The top rectangle, which is formed during an upward price move, it signals the continuation of the uptrend. The next rectangle is formed during a downtrend and is called as a bottom rectangle which signals that the down move will continue after the breakout. Now the rectangle patterns can also reverse the trend. So these reversal patterns are given specific names like double top and triple top when the price tests the resistance twice and thrice respectively and then moves lower 
the other category is double bottom and triple bottom where the price tests the support level twice and thrice respectively and reverses upwards so in order to clearly understand what the pattern is about to do we have to wait till the breakout happens so it is essentially a confusing piece of price action if you try to learn this pattern by heart now what i recommend is to wait for the price to give a real breakout and then decide if you want to trade with the trend or against it so in short in order to identify the rectangle pattern we will need to locate a trending stock that is having a period of consolidation and there should be minimum two tops and two bottoms that are horizontal to one another which will act as the resistance and support levels as i have mentioned the top rectangle is seen during an uptrend you would need to notice a breakout through the upper level of the pattern now this will confirm that the bullish move is coming back and traders can look to enter long positions when the pattern forms a break up with the resistance level to continue with the bullish trend while the bottom rectangle pattern is the total opposite of its bullish counterpart this pattern occurs during a downtrend and the price would need to break the lower support level of the pattern to confirm its presence and traders can look to enter short positions when the price breaks the bottom of the range to continue with the bearish trend now how to trade when you see a rectangle pattern for a top rectangle pattern you can enter a long trade when the price breaks above the resistance level if you are an aggressive trader looking for the best price to take an entry the downside is that it could be a false breakout and you can get stopped out the next approach is more conservative where we will wait for the breakout candle to close above the resistance level most often this method will reduce the chances of getting trapped in a fake out but the only limitation is when the price breaks out with huge momentum and you will now be buying at higher prices and finally what if you miss out of the breakout completely then the only option available is to wait for a pullback or retest back to the resistance turn support level and take an entry from there and if the retest doesn't happen don't chase the price just avoid trading it all together you will find even better trades make sure that the volume rises during the breakout indicating a higher buying interest you can also use indicators like macd rsi etc to do the same and for a bottom rectangle pattern with a bearish breakdown our primary instinct should be to sell now here are the three entries possible the most aggressive is entering as and when the breakout happens the more conservative approach is to wait for the confirmation after the close of the breakdown candle below the support level the final option is to wait for a retest in case you miss the breakdown so i leave it up to you to decide make sure you validate the breakout with volumes and momentum based indicator each and every time now we will learn to set up proper stop loss we don't want the stop loss to affect our risk management so when you notice a rectangle breakout you have to measure the distance between the support and resistance and then place your stop loss in the middle of this length this is applicable to both top and bottom rectangles now your trade will be secured by doing this and you will be aware that the maximum you can loss from this trade is equal to half the size of the pattern now after buying or selling on the rectangle breakout pattern the stop loss should be placed at the midpoint because the breakout will likely to have shakeouts before continuing with the trend thus if you put your stop loss at or just below the breakout point the smart money will probably hit your stop loss before beginning to run with the trend now how to exit a profitable trade when trading the rectangle pattern there is a clearly stated rule about the minimum target you should remain in your trade for a minimum price move which is equal to the size or the width of the pattern this implies that the distance between the support and resistance of the triangle should be placed on the chart beginning from the breakout moment now since the stop loss is at the midpoint of the rectangle range it means that the target is twice the size of the stop loss this enables a reward to risk of 2 is to 1 from the offset you can also use the trailing stop loss method if you want to ride the trend until it's exhausted there is yet another way in which traders can successfully trade rectangles and that is by buying at the support and selling at the resistance levels if the width of the rectangle pattern is very high now this can be used as an intraday or swing trading strategy if it provides a sufficient reward to risk ratio So for a top rectangle pattern you can take a long entry from the bottom support level and place your stop loss below the lowest wick or candle formed during the consolidation and the target will obviously be the next resistance level similarly for a bottom rectangle pattern 
you can look to short when the price reverses down from the top resistance level and place your stop loss above the highest wick or candle that is formed during the consolidation. The target is obviously the lower support level. Now let's jump into the final category of patterns. First of all, I will talk about the cup and handle pattern. The reason why I have kept the cup and handle pattern for the last is that there is still an ongoing debate as to whether the cup and handle pattern is more of a continuation pattern or a reversal pattern. In my opinion, the cup and handle pattern can be both a continuation and a reversal pattern. Now it depends on where it is formed in the chart. If it is formed during an uptrend, then this pattern indicates a bullish continuation. Likewise, if it gets formed during a downtrend, the pattern will indicate a bullish reversal. Now, I am not actually curious about where the pattern forms, but I am more interested in the fact that the breakout always occurs towards the upside. That is, the cup and handle pattern is expected to give a bullish breakout. Now, let's dive into the finer details. The pattern comprises of two parts. As the name suggests, a cup and a handle and also a neckline which will act as the resistance. The cup forms after a bearish price decline which is followed by a period of consolidation with smaller or weaker candles that shows signs of the market bottoming after which the price makes a higher high towards the resistance which indicates that the bulls are taking over from the bears gradually. Now it looks like a ball or an object with a round bottom and the volume should decrease towards the middle of the pattern which is during the consolidation and then rise towards the up move which indicates an increase in the buying pressure. How the price reacts at the resistance is important because it tells you whether there is still selling pressure available at the resistance. Now a cup and handle pattern becomes invalid if you see a large sell off from the resistance level as it tells you that the selling pressure is still available there and the market is not ready to head higher. But if you notice that the price is holding up nicely at the resistance then it is a sign of strength as it tells you that the buyers are willing to buy at higher prices. So the handle has to form a tight consolidation or build up under the resistance level. At this point, many traders would do what they have learned from many trading books. That is, the price is at the resistance and it is time to go short. Now that's fine if the price has made a strong momentum move into the resistance and it got rejected strongly from there. But if the price approaches the resistance and forms a build up, or even if it makes higher lows into the resistance, then you have to be very careful because this is a sign of strength which is telling you that the buyers are willing to buy at these higher prices. And the last thing you want to do is to short the market because it's likely to break out higher. So the handle has to give a tight consolidation which can be in the form of either a bull flag pattern or a bull pennant pattern which by themselves are bullish continuation patterns. Now moreover, the volumes should decline during the consolidation, indicating a lack of selling pressure. Also keep in mind that the handle has to be smaller than the cup and it should not drop into the lower half of the cup and ideally it should stay in the upper third of the cup. The deeper the handle moves down, the less likely the market will break out higher. Now the handle is the last bearish attempt to push the prices lower. And when it fails and the prices breaks above the handle, we can expect the market to rise. Now let us take a look at the entry, stop loss and target criteria. The first cup and handle confirmation comes when the price breaks above the tight consolidation range. So this is the most aggressive and cheapest entry price that you can find. But since there is a resistance level above it, the price could just reverse and hit your stop loss. So an alternative entry is to go long on the breakout above the neckline. This is the second best price you can get an entry at. But there is still a danger of a false breakout in this method. And if you are more conservative, you can wait for the breakout candle to close above the neckline and then take a long entry on the next candle above the breakout candle highs. However, sometimes the market closes much higher and you will have a poor reward to risk ratio. Now this will result in a wide stop loss and a smaller position sizing on your trade. And in such instances, you can wait for the price to do a shakeout in the form of a pullback or retest back to the neckline. And you can plan to enter when the price reverses higher. Now make sure to validate if the breakout is real by using volumes and other momentum indicators. Another point to note is that the cups that have longer and more U-shaped bottoms gives a better signal and it is better to avoid the cups with a sharp V-shaped bottom. 
Now the second question is where should I set my stop losses? Now whenever you place a stop loss, it should always follow this thumb rule. Your stop loss should be placed at a level where if the market reaches it, your trading setup is invalidated. Now ask yourself, when will a cup and handle pattern becomes invalid? A cup and handle pattern invalidation comes when the price breaks below the handle of the pattern. Now this stop loss setting is same as in the case of a bull flag or a bull pennant pattern. Now you don't want to put the stop loss at the exact low of the handle because the market could trade into that area of value and then reverse higher. So instead give it some buffer below the handle like 180 or below it. And finally how to exit your winners. The first method is obviously the classic price projection method. Here we measure the height of the cup from the bottom of the cup to the neckline and then project it from the breakout point above the neckline. This will be your future profit target. Now the second method is to use moving averages to trail your stop loss and ride big trends. So in a trending market, the price can remain above the moving average for a long period of time and you will only exit when the price closes below the moving average. Moving on to the final pattern of this video, the inverted cup and handle pattern. If you flip a cup and handle pattern upside down, you will get an inverted cup and handle pattern. This is a pattern that gives a bearish breakdown. Depending on where it is formed in a trend, it can be a bearish continuation pattern or a bearish reversal pattern. But we are least interested in where it forms. But we are more interested in the bearish breakdown that it provides. The formation of the inverted cup shows a depleting demand and a lack of buying pressure which can be validated by using the volumes. Now the handle should be a tight consolidation in form of a beer flag or a beer pennant which also comes with contracting volumes. Now if the handle moves way higher beyond the 50% of the cup then it is better not to consider it as a valid pattern since there is enough buying pressure still available at the neckline or the support level which is pushing the prices higher. The entry criteria are to either take a short trade when the price breaks below the handle of the consolidation or when the price breaks below the neckline. And a more conservative entry would be below the low of the breakdown candle after the breakdown candle closes below the support level. And if you have missed out on an entry, you can wait for a price pullback or retest back to the neckline and then go short when the price reverses lower. Now the stop loss can be placed with 180 ATR buffer above the handle of the pattern. And finally, the target can be set equal to the height of the inverted cup from the neckline to the top of the cup and project it below the neckline from the breakout point. Yet another way is to write the whole trend using a trailing stop loss method using moving averages and exit only when the price moves above the average. Now that is all the major continuation patterns in a single video. Now in the last part, we talked about 5 different types of continuation chart patterns. However, in this video, we will talk about reversal chart patterns and we will not just talk about it, we will examine why these patterns work in the market and why you should trade them. We will discuss the 4 most common and most profitable reversal patterns along with their entry, stop loss and target criteria. And if you don't know what reversal patterns are, as the name suggests, these patterns signal that the existing trend in the market will most probably reverse or in simple terms, they predict that the market will take a U-turn in the opposite direction of the existing trend after the end of the pattern. Now most of these reversal patterns are formed as consolidation in between the trends. So it's like the market telling us that it is tired of going in a particular direction and is looking to move in the completely opposite direction after taking some rest. So in this video, I'll be discussing four reversal chart patterns and their counter patterns, starting with the head and shoulders and inverted head and shoulder patterns, followed by double top and double bottoms, then triple top and triple bottoms, and finally we will wind up with the rising and falling wedges. So without wasting any time, let's begin. The head and shoulders pattern is one of the most popular reversal chart patterns out there. And because it is popular, the chances of making a mistake is also high. Now let us understand what this pattern really implies. Actually the pattern consists of four different parts, the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder and the neckline. Overall the pattern looks simple right? But what does it actually mean and why does it matter? Let's analyze this in greater detail. 
we will start from the left shoulder the initial trend in the market is an uptrend where the prices rallies higher and then the market does a pullback or a correction and the left shoulder is formed as the market does a pullback and at this point there is no way to tell if the market will reverse because a pullback occurs regularly in a trending market and it may just be another swing low from which the prices can move higher the market then trades above the previous swing high forming a higher high however the sellers take control or resist the upward rally and push the price lower towards the previously formed swing low now the swing high formed as a result of this price action is the head of the pattern also the line connecting both the swing lows forms a support level called as the neckline now what we can observe here is that the uptrend structure of higher highs and higher lows is violated but still we cannot guarantee that a reversal will happen because the price might even trade sideways now once again from the neckline the buyers make a final attempt to push the prices higher but they fail to even break above the previous high or the head of the pattern and yet again the sellers take control and push the price towards the neckline this forms a lower high in compared to the previous high which indicates a shift in the sentiment towards bearishness now the only level that stands in favor of the bulls is the neckline which is also a support level or in other words the neckline is the last line of defense for the buyers and if the price breaks below it the market could head lower and begin the start of a new downtrend so basically the head and shoulder pattern signals a possible trend reversal as the buyers fail to push the prices higher are all head and shoulder patterns worth trading Actually there are a few things that you must seriously look at before you trade the head and shoulder chart pattern. These things are associated with how reliable is the head and shoulder pattern formed. Now what you need to understand is that not all head and shoulder patterns are created equal because how the right shoulder forms is a key criterion to whether you want to trade the breakout or not. For example, if you have a head and shoulder pattern that has a very long right shoulder, then you want to avoid buying the breakout. And why is it so? Because the price has moved a very long distance from the highs of the right shoulder to the neckline of the support area which will attract more sellers on the way so the market is likely to face a buying pressure due to the profit booking by the sellers and also from the traders who want to buy from the support level now this creates a strong buying pressure which will lead to an increase in the price and the pattern will fail so make sure that the right shoulder is shallow and ideally it should stay below 50% of the head other than this there are two more things you must pay attention to while selecting the best head and shoulder patterns first one is the market structure and the second one is the duration of the pattern let me explain each one of them it is true that head and shoulders is a reversal chart pattern but if the market is in a very strong uptrend it is very unlikely that a simple chart pattern can reverse the entire up move instead the market is likely to continue higher maybe the pattern can generate a short term retracement but not entirely a reversal so make sure that you don't bet against a very strong trending market just because you have seen a head and shoulder pattern now the second factor is the duration of the pattern a typical head and shoulder pattern can take 200 days 20 days or even 20 minutes to form depending on the chart time frames that you follow but with some common sense it is very obvious that the pattern that takes 200 days to form is more significant than a head and shoulders that takes 20 days to form which is more relevant than a pattern formed in 20 minutes and why you may ask because if the market breaks the 200 day pattern neckline there will be more traders or buyers who bought at the support and most of them will keep their sell stop loss orders just below the neckline now these buyers will get trapped and they will rush for exit or their sell stop loss orders will be triggered on breakdown which will further increase the selling pressure now when you take the case of the pattern formed in 20 minutes This may not always hold true because only very few people are aware of it and the pattern may not give you the desired result. So a head and shoulder pattern on a higher time frame and one that took more time to form has a higher chance of success. Now this does not mean you go short immediately when the price breaks the neckline. There are a few ways to trade the head and shoulder chart pattern in the best possible manner. Now I will start off with the trade entry techniques and there are four possible entry methods for this pattern. The first and most aggressive entry is when the price break down the neckline. 
Now the idea is to wait for the breakdown candle to close below the neckline and then take a short entry below the close or the low price of the breakout candle. Now the advantage of this technique is that you will be able to enter into a trade very early and perhaps you will get the best possible entry price but the drawback is that the price could reverse and give a false breakout and might even hit your stop loss. So the second entry technique is associated with a breakout following a build up of prices. Now build up means a tight consolidation of prices near an area of value prominently near a support or resistance level. We can learn more about this concept in the secrets of support and resistance in my price action course. In this case, we will wait for the market to form a tight consolidation near the neckline or support level. And if the market breaks down, you can reference your trade entry just below the close or the low of the breakdown candle. Now the advantage of this method is obviously the tight placement of stop loss and an improved reward to risk ratio which we will discuss in the next section and it also provides a good entry price. But the drawback is that the breakdown candle can be huge and you will be selling at a much lower price. Now you might be wondering what if I miss the breakout or what if the market doesn't form a build up and still continues to head lower, won't I miss out on the trade? Now this is a relevant question because build ups don't actually happen every now and then. So another common method is waiting for a primary pullback in prices. This technique lets you catch the price move even after a breakdown. Now here is how it works. So if the market breaks down without forming a build up, then we will wait for a primary pullback to occur, which is a temporary up move of prices with weak candles, which generally resembles a flag or pennant pattern, which you may obviously know how to trade. And eventually if the market does a pullback, then you can look to go short on the break of the previous swing lows or enter right away when the price starts moving lower. And as I have mentioned, the best pullbacks are those with shallow retracement and small bodied candles. But what if we get a steep pullback and with large bodied candles? What will we do then? Now if the pullback is deep, then we will wait for the price to retest the neckline or the previous support turn resistance level as per the principle of polarity. We have to observe if the price retests the neckline and then wait for a price rejection from the neckline in form of bearish reversal candlesticks like shooting star, bearish engulfing pattern, evening star etc. You can learn more about reversal trading using candlesticks in my price action course. And if you find there is a price rejection, then you can go short on the very next candle. Now the retest technique lets you time your entry and even short the market at better prices. But the downside is that the market will not always do a retest and you might miss out on the trade altogether. Another important point to keep in mind is that the volume should decrease during the formation of the left shoulder and the head, indicating a loss in the buying interest and it should rise during the formation of the right shoulder and also during the breakout, confirming an interest in selling. So make sure you use the right entry techniques at the right times. Now let us talk about the placement of stop losses with respect to our entry criterions. As I have discussed multiple times, your stop loss should be at a level that if breached will invalidate your trading setup. Now since we are dealing with a head and shoulder pattern, your stop loss should be at a level that invalidates the pattern altogether. To be fair, if the price moves above the right shoulder, the pattern will get invalidated. So if your entry was aggressive as and when the price breakdown from the neckline, then you should set your stop loss at or above the right shoulder of the pattern. Now what if you took a short entry after a build up near the neckline? Then you get the freedom to place a much tighter stop loss, preferably just above the build up consolidation which will boost your reward to risk ratio by some margin. Now let's say you missed both these entries and you shorted the market after the prices formed a primary pullback. Then set your stop losses above the highest price in the group of the pullback candles or just place it above the neckline if the pullback is formed very close to the neckline. And the last method is if you have entered after a retest. In this scenario, the stop loss can be placed just above the highest wick of the group of retest candles or you can be more conservative and place the stop loss above the right shoulder of the pattern. And finally, we will take a look at how to exit from our trade for maximum profit. Well, there are three popular techniques that you can use. The price projection method, the trailing stop loss method and a combination of these methods. 
Now let me explain each one of them. The price projection is a classical charting technique that determines where the move might end. Now it focuses on price exhaustion. The idea is quite simple. The prices will move a distance equal to the highest width of the pattern. Now in this case, the highest width of the pattern is from the neckline to the head. So all you have to do is to measure the width from the head to the neckline and then project this distance from the neckline towards the downside. The second method is more like trailing your stop loss to ride big trends. Now if you have followed me on my last video, you know how to trail your stop loss to ride massive trends in the market. One way you can do this is to trail your stop loss with moving averages. The selection of moving averages will depend on the time frame that you are trading on. For short term trends, a 20 moving average will do the job. But for a medium term trend, a 50 moving average will be a good choice. And for a long term trend, a 100 or 200 moving average is the best possible option. The idea is to ride the trend until the price moves above the trailing stop loss where you can exit your position. The last method uses a combination of both these techniques. The idea is to exit half your positions at the price projection level and then ride the rest using a trailing stop loss. By doing this, you will be able to lock into some good profits and not fall prey to the market reversals. Now, I would like to add a few more points as to when and where to trade this pattern on the charts. So when you think about it, head and shoulders is a reversal pattern, but it is also a bearish breakout pattern. With that idea in mind, you can either trade this when the uptrend is weakening and you find a head and shoulder pattern that confirms the trend change or you can also trade this pattern when the market is in a downtrend and the pattern appears as a temporary pause in the downward price action. Now by doing so, you are taking a trade in the direction of the trend and not against the forward prices. But make sure that you don't bet against a very strong uptrend just because you spotted this pattern and it may not work in your favor then. Moving on, the inverse head and shoulders or inverted head and shoulders or reverse head and shoulders pattern is a bullish reversal chart pattern that signals that the buyers are in control. It is just like a mirror reflection of the head and shoulders pattern. So I won't be digging deep into the minute details of this pattern. Anyway, let's find out what inverse head and shoulder pattern really means. This pattern also has four parts. The left shoulder is the result of a pullback against the downtrend, either because of a profit booking or eager buyers stepping into the market. But the sellers are still in control as they push the prices lower. However, the buyers are also stepping in, which explains the stronger pullback to retest the previous swing high level, which forms the head of the pattern. From this, we can assume that the sellers are getting weak as they couldn't push the price lower. Instead, the buyers are getting stronger as they continue to push the prices higher, retesting the resistance area or the previous swing high which forms the neckline of the pattern. Now the sellers tried to push the price down one last time but they were met with the intense buying pressure thereby forming a higher swing low compared to the head of the pattern. Now this forms the right shoulder of the pattern and it tells us that the sentiment has changed from bearish to bullish. And if the price manages to break above the resistance, then the inverse head and shoulder pattern is confirmed and the market could continue higher. Now, you might be thinking of buying when the price breaks out of the inverse head and shoulders and gains some profits. But this is not easy because not all of them are reliable. What matters is the strength of the market structure and the duration of the inverse head and shoulder formation. So if the market trend is strongly bearish, the chances of reversal are quite dim even if the pattern forms and it could just be a short pause before the continuation of the trend. Now the other point is that the longer the inverted head and shoulder pattern takes to form, the more significant it is. This also means that the shorter the duration of the inverse head and shoulder pattern, the more likely it will fail, especially when you're trading it against the trend. Also keep in mind that how the right shoulder forms is also a key criterion for whether you want to trade the breakout or not. So let's say you have an inverse head and shoulder pattern that has a very long right shoulder, then you might want to avoid buying the breakout because the price has already moved a long distance from the lows of the right shoulder to the resistance area which attracts more buyers along the way. So the market is likely to face a selling pressure from the profit booking by the buyers and also from traders who want to sell at the resistance level. Now this will create a strong selling pressure which will lead to a price decline. So a rule that you can follow is that the right shoulder should be above 50% of the head of the pattern. 
Now let's talk about when you train the inverse head and shoulder pattern. Even though this is a reversal pattern, the idea that inverse head and shoulder pattern is a bullish breakout pattern is more prominent. So it makes sense to trade this pattern when the market is in an uptrend. And when you trade the inverse head and shoulder pattern in an uptrend, you just increase your odds of winning because you are now trading with the trend and not against it. Another opportunity to trade this pattern is when you spot this pattern at the end of the downtrend and the inverse head and shoulder pattern acts as a confirmation that the existing downtrend is weakening and there is a possibility that the market might reverse and move higher. But make sure that you don't trade this pattern in a very strong downtrend because the possibility of trend change is very low in such instances. Now let's move on to learning how to trade this pattern when you spot one. We will discuss the entry criteria first. The most aggressive entry is when the price breaks above the neckline or the resistance. The idea is to wait for the breakout candle to close above the neckline and then take a long entry above the close price or the high price of the breakout candle. The advantage of this technique is that you will be able to enter into the trade very early and perhaps you will get the best possible entry price but the main drawback is that the price could reverse and give a false breakout and it might even hit your stop loss. The second entry technique is a breakout with buildup. Now this happens when we observe a tight consolidation of prices near the resistance level or neckline. So when you see a buildup at the resistance, it tells you that there is buying pressure willing to buy at higher prices despite profit taking and short selling from that level. Also, the traders who went short at that resistance level are likely to have their buy stop loss orders above the resistance level. So when the price breaks out of the resistance, these clusters of stop losses will provide fuel to push the prices even higher. And if the market breaks out above, you can straight away enter into a long trade or you can wait for the candle to close and enter above the close or above the high of the breakout candle. The advantage of using this method is obviously the tight placement of stop losses and an improved reward to risk ratio and also a very good entry price. But the main drawback is when the range of the breakout candle is very huge and you will be buying at a much higher price. Now what if the market doesn't form a buildup or it forms a huge breakout candle and still continues to head higher. So if you miss both the above entries, the other method is to wait for a primary pullback in prices to happen. This technique helps you to catch the price move even after a breakout. So if the market break out without forming a buildup, then we will wait for a primary pullback to occur, which is a temporary down move of prices with weak candles. And if the market does form a pullback, then you can look to go along on the break of the previous swing high or end the right away when the prices starts rising. And as I have mentioned, the best pullbacks are the ones with shallow retracement and small bodied candles. But what if we get a steep pullback with large bodied candles? What would we do then? So if the pullback is very deep, then we will wait for the price to retest the neckline or the previous resistance turn support level where we expect the buyers to come in. We need to observe if the price retests the neckline and if it does, we will wait for a price rejection from the neckline in the form of bullish reversal candlesticks like bullish hammer, bullish engulfing pattern, morning star, etc. And if you find there is a rejection, then you can go long on the very next candle. Now this retest technique lets you time your trade entry and even take up positions at better prices. But the downside is that there is no guarantee that the price will retest the level, especially if the market is in a strong uptrend and you might miss out on the trade altogether. Yet another important point to keep in mind is that the volume should decrease during the formation of the left shoulder and head, indicating a loss of interest in selling and the volume should rise during the formation of the right shoulder and also during the breakout, confirming an increase in the buying pressure. So make sure you use the right entry techniques at the right times. This is exactly where you should reference your stop loss. So if your entry was very aggressive as and when the price break out from the neckline, then you should set your stop loss at or below the right shoulder of the pattern. 
Now what if you took a long entry after a build up near the neckline? Then you have the convenience of placing a much tighter stop loss, preferably just below the build up which will in turn improve your reward to risk ratio. Now let's say you have missed both these entries and you entered a position in the market after the price has formed a primary pullback. Then set your stop loss below the lowest price in the group of pullback candles including the EBIC or place it just above the neckline if the pullback form is very close to the neckline. Now the last method is if you are entering the trades after a retest. In this scenario, the stop loss can be placed just below the lowest week of the group of retest candles or you can be more conservative and place your stop loss below the right shoulder of the pattern to save yourself from long wicks. Now we will take a look at how to exit from our trade for maximum profits. And as previously mentioned, there are three popular techniques that you can make use of. The price projection method, trading stop loss method and a combination of both these methods. The price projection helps determine where the price move might possibly exhaust. Now here's how it works. Just calculate the distance between the head and the neckline. Then project this distance upwards from the breakout point or neckline. This projected price point is where you should exit your trade. This price projection technique helps decide whether it's too late to enter a trade or not. And if the price is very close to reaching the price projection, then there's probably not much juice left in the move and you might want to skip the trade. But unlike the price projection technique, a trailing stop loss method does not use a fixed target profit. Instead, you trail your stop loss as the price moves in your favor so that you can ride the entire trend. So in order to do that, the first step is to decide on the type of trend you want to capture, whether it's a short term, medium term or long term trend. Then you can trail your stop loss with the appropriate moving averages like 20 period for short term, 50 period for medium term and 200 period moving average for long term trades. You will exit the trade only when the price closes below the moving average. Now the last method uses a combination of both these methods and you will exit half your positions at the price projection level and ride the rest using the trading stop loss. By doing this, you will be able to lock in some of the profits and not fall prey to the market reversals. Let's move on to the third pattern which is the double top pattern. Now this is one of the most common chart patterns that you will encounter. So this is a good thing because you will get a good number of trades. But this is also a bad thing because which trades to select will be a big concern. So we will discuss the basics of what a double top pattern is, how it works and how you should go about trading it. Now a double top is a bearish reversal chart pattern and it consists of three parts. The first peak or the first price rejection, the second peak or the second price rejection and the swing low forms a neckline or an area of support. Now what does the double top chart pattern really mean? The first peak is formed as a result of the market doing a pullback. At this point, you can't tell for sure if it will be a reversal as pullbacks are very common in trending markets from time to time. This is followed by a second peak where the prices get rejected in the same area again indicating that the buyers are not very keen to buy at higher prices. Now this is the first sign that the market could reverse lower and the break below the neckline will confirm our bias that the sellers are in control and the market could continue lower. So in a sense, the double top chart pattern signals a possible trend reversal as the market is unable to move higher. But keep in mind that not all double top chart patterns are created equally. For example, if you spotted a double top when the market is in a strong uptrend, the chances are the market will continue heading higher and the last thing you want to do is to go short or trade against the trend just because you have spotted a double top chart pattern. So there are two important things that you must pay attention to when trading a double top chart pattern. First of all, you need to see where and how the pattern forms and secondly, how long does it take to form or the duration it takes to form the pattern. As I have already mentioned, you don't want to short a double top against a strong uptrend. And in addition to this, the space between the first and second peaks is also an important factor worth considering. This means you should probably avoid double tops with both their peaks very close to one another. Instead, we want to trade those double tops when the space is far apart from the first and second peak. And why does the space between the peaks have to be so far apart? The reason is quite simple. When there is more time and space between the first and second peaks, 
these swing levels or peaks become more significant as more traders will become aware of the price level. And as you may have already guessed, when a level receives more attention, it attracts more order flow as more traders would want to trade around that area. So when a large group of traders gets it wrong, it presents an opportunity that we can take advantage of. So beware of trading double tops and double bottoms and trading on an intraday basis over a shorter time frame. The higher the time frame and the larger the space between the swing highs, the greater the chances of a successful pattern. Now most trading gurus will tell you to short the double top breakout when the price breaks below the neckline and they will ask you to set the stop loss above the highs. However, there are two issues with this approach. First of all, after a strong move lower, the market could reverse higher proving to be a false breakout and thereby hitting a stop loss. Secondly, the stop loss is inherently very large and it does not offer a favorable reward to risk ratio on your trade. So there are a few ways that you can think of to fix this. Let's start by discussing the trade entry criteria first. Now, the most aggressive entry is when the price breaks below the neckline or the support level. The idea is to wait for a breakout candle to close below the neckline and then take a short entry below the close or the low price of the breakout candle. Now, waiting for the candle to close will ensure that the candle closes below the neckline and suggest that it is not a false breakout. The other advantage of this technique is that you will be able to enter into a trade at a very early stage but the drawback is that the size of the breakout candle can be too large sometimes which can badly reduce your reward to risk ratio. In some cases it is always beneficial to wait for a price build up to form near the neckline which acts as a support level in this pattern. Now we will take a short trade when the price breaks below the neckline after the build up. This will ensure a higher probability of success because the trader who are long near the neckline of the support will have their stop loss orders placed below the support level and this will cut their losses if the market continues to head lower. And once price breaks below the support level, all these sell stop loss orders will be hit which will add further selling pressure thereby increasing the probability of success. On top of that, this trade will ensure a more favorable reward to risk ratio as you will have a much tighter stop loss. Anyway, the problem with this approach is that the breakout candle can be too large and also the fact that only a limited number of trades are available. Now what if you miss the breakout trade? Is it the end? Not really. You can still enter a trade if the prices form a primary pullback in the form of a flag or a pennant pattern. A primary pullback is nothing but a temporary up move of prices with weak candles, most probably due to profit booking. And a good pullback is always shallow and is associated with weak candles. But what if we get a steep pullback with large bodied candles? What will we do then? Yet again, we can look for a retest of prices back to the neckline which will now behave like a resistance level where we can expect to find the sellers to come in. So if the price do the retest, then we will wait for a price rejection from the neckline in the form of bearish reversal candlesticks like shooting star, bearish engulfing pattern, evening star etc. And if you find there is a price rejection, you can back yourself to take a short entry as the price begins to move lower. The retest entry provides a better entry price than any other entry methods but the downside is that the prices don't always give a retest and especially in strong trending markets you don't expect pullbacks or retest. Above all, make sure to confirm the breakouts with higher than average volumes and using other momentum indicators like RSI, MACD etc. Your stop loss should be at a level that if breached will invalidate your trading setup. Since we are trading a double top pattern, our stop loss should be at a level that invalidates the pattern altogether. In that sense, if the price moves above the swing high of the pattern, the pattern will be invalidated. But there is a small twist. Number one, if we do this, the stop loss can be too large and so the reward to risk will be very low. Secondly, the market can move up to the top of the resistance level and then reverse lower after hitting your stop loss just to form a triple top pattern and then move lower completing the pattern, which can be really frustrating. So what I recommend is to either place your stop loss at 50% level between the swing top and the neckline or if this distance is too large then set your stop loss with an adequate buffer using the ATR indicator just above the breakdown candle high. 
This could be your stop loss. Your entry was very aggressive. That is, you went short as and when the price broke below the neckline. Now, what if you took a short entry after a build up near the neckline? Then you get the freedom to place a much tighter and hassle free stop loss, preferably just above the build up or consolidation, which will boost your reward to risk ratio. Now, let's say you miss both these entries and you shorted the market after the prices formed a primary pullback. Then you set your stop loss above the highest price in the group of the pullback candles or just above the neckline if the pullback is formed very close to the neckline. Now the last method is if you are entering after a retest. In such a scenario, the stop loss can be placed just above the highest wick of the group of retest candles or you can be more conservative and place the stop loss at 50% of the width of the pattern. Now how to set your targets? As you may have guessed, there are three techniques to exit your trades, price projection, trailing stop loss and a combination of these two methods. Let me explain each one of them. The price projection focuses on price exhaustion. The idea is that prices will move an equal distance to the highest width of the pattern after the breakout. Now, the highest width of this pattern is from the neckline to the swing top or the swing high. So all you have to do is to identify the distance from the swing top to the neckline. Then project this distance from the neckline towards the downside. This will give you your desired profit target. The second method of trailing your stop loss is to ride big moves. We will make use of moving averages of different periods to do this. And the selection of moving averages will depend on the time frame that you are trading on. So for capturing short term trends, you use a 20 period moving average. For a medium term trend, you use a 50 moving average. And for a long term trend, you use 100 or 200 moving average. And we will exit the trade only when the price moves below the trailing stop loss. Now the last method uses a combination of both these methods. The idea is to exit half your positions at the price projection level and then ride the rest of the move using a trailing stop loss. By doing this, you will be able to lock into some good profits and not fall prey to the market reversals. Now, there is one more important piece of information that I want to share, which is associated with finding and trading double tops with a high level of accuracy and win rate, which involves the use of multiple time frame analysis. The concept is rather simple. The first step is to identify a downtrending market or a downtrending price action on a higher time frame depending upon your trading style. I have already made a video on time frame selection. You can watch that video to learn more. Now what you need to do is to wait for the price to approach an area of resistance on the high time frame. Now if you find such a setup, move down to your lower time frame, then look for a double top pattern on the lower time frame. This is a very simple yet effective technique that allows you to time your trade entries at the absolute highs of the double top pattern, which by the way is the best possible price level that you can get and is also a professional way of trading this pattern. So please keep in mind that if you are not comfortable using this, then you would be better off ignoring it. You don't necessarily have to consider all the options, just choose one or two that work well for you. Now we will focus on what a double bottom pattern is, how does it work and how to approach it while trading it. A double bottom pattern is a bullish trend reversal pattern and it is the exact opposite of a double top. This pattern also has three parts. It has a first low or first price rejection, followed by a second low or second price rejection, and also a neckline, which is an area of resistance connecting the swing high in between. Now, what do this part of the pattern indicate? A first low is formed and the market declines lower, forming a swing low and then moving higher. At this point, it is likely a retracement in the downtrend. But then, a second swing low gets formed when the market rejects the previous swing low level and retraces higher again. So we can now assume that there is buying pressure, but it is too early to tell if the market could continue higher. We can only confirm the strength of the buying pressure when the price breaks above the neckline. Now when the price breaks above the neckline or resistance level, it signals the interest in buying and the possibility of the market moving higher. So in short, the double bottom pattern signals that the downtrend has possibly bottomed out and the price is about to move higher. 
Many traders make this mistake of buying the break of the neckline after a double bottom pattern is formed. But this won't always work in your favor because if the market is in a strong downtrend and it forms small double bottoms every now and then, the chances are the market is likely to continue lower. In addition to this, not all double bottoms are made the same. The time frame that we use for spotting the pattern and the space between the swing lows or the swing bottoms are also important factors worth considering. So a double bottom pattern formed on a higher time frame is more significant than one formed on a smaller time frame. Moving on to the entry criteria for trading. So an aggressive entry is when the price breaks above the neckline or resistance. The idea is to either enter a long position on the breakout which can often cause the false breakout problem or you can wait for the breakout candle to close above the neckline and then take a long entry above the close or the high price of the breakout candle. The advantage of this technique is that you'll be able to enter into the trade early and might even get the best possible entry price but the drawback is that the breakout candle could be too large or even the price could reverse and give a false breakout and hit your stop loss. The second entry technique is a breakout with build up near the neckline. This happens when we observe a tight consolidation of prices near the resistance level or neckline. So when you see a build up at the resistance, it tells you there's buying pressure and people are willing to buy at higher prices despite profit taking or short selling from the level. Also, traders who short from the level are likely to have their buy stop loss orders placed above the resistance level. So when the price eventually breaks out of the resistance, all these clusters of buy stop loss orders will be hit and it will provide the boost that the price needs to move higher. And if the market breaks out of the neckline, you can enter your long trade just above the close or above the high of the breakout candle. Now the advantage of using this method is obviously the tight placement of stop loss and an improved reward to risk ratio and also a very good entry price. But the drawback is that the range of the breakout candle can be huge and you will be buying at a much higher price. Now what if the market does not form a build up or it forms a huge breakout candle and still continues to head higher. So if you missed both the above entries, the third method is to look for a primary pullback in prices to happen. This technique helps you to catch the price move even after a breakout. So if the market breaks out without forming a build up, then we will wait for a primary pullback to occur which is a temporary down move of prices with weak candles. And if the market does a pullback, then you can look to go long on the break of the previous swing high or enter right away when the prices start rising. Now the best pullback should have a shallow retracement with small bodied candles. But sometimes we get a steep pullback to the neckline. This is called as a retest. So when the price retests to the neckline or now a support level, we expect buyers to come in. So we need to observe if price retests the neckline. And if it does, then we wait for a price rejection from the neckline in the form of bullish reversal candlesticks like bullish hammer, bullish engulfing pattern, morning star, etc. And if you find there is a price rejection, then you can go long on the next candle. Now the retest technique lets you time your trade entry and even take up positions at far better prices. But the downside is that there is no guarantee that the price will retest to the level, especially in a strong uptrend and you might miss out on the trade altogether. Yet another important point to keep in mind is that the volume should increase during the breakout confirming an increase in the buying pressure. So make sure you use the right entry techniques at the right times. Now let us talk about the placement of stop losses with respect to our entry criteria. The double top pattern becomes invalid when the price reverses from the neckline and closes below the swing low of the pattern. And if you were to place your stop loss based on this idea, then the stop loss would be too large and you will incur huge losses and moreover the price could reverse from the swing low and move higher again forming a triple bottom pattern. So where exactly should you place your stop loss? Now what I recommend is to either place your stop loss at 50% level between the swing bottom and the neckline or if this distance is too large then set your stop loss with adequate buffer using the ATR indicator just below the low of the breakout candle. This could be our stop loss if your entry was very aggressive that is you went long as and when the price break out of the neckline. Now what if you took a long entry after a build up near the neckline, then you have the convenience of placing a much tighter stop loss, preferably below the build up, which will in turn improve your reward to risk ratio. 
Now let's say you have missed both these entries and you have entered a position in the market after the prices formed a primary pullback. Then you can set your stop loss below the lowest price in the group of pullback candles including the wick or you can place it just above the neckline if the pullback is formed very close to the neckline. And the last method is if you have entered after a retest. In this scenario, the stop loss can be placed just below the lowest week of the group of retest candles or you can be more conservative and place the stop loss at 50% of the distance between the swing low and the neckline of the pattern in order to save yourself from long wicks. And finally, we will discuss how to exit from our trade for maximum profits. And as always, there are three methods that we can make use of the price projection, trailing stop loss and a combination of both. The price projection calculates the distance between the swing bottom and the neckline. So in the price projection method, you have to calculate the distance between the swing bottom and the neckline. Then project this distance upward from the breakout point or neckline. The projected price point or level is where you exit the trade. This technique will help you decide whether it is too late to enter a trade or not. For instance, if the price is close to reaching its price projection, then there is probably not much meat left in the move and you might want to skip the trade. But unlike the price projection technique, a trailing stop loss method does not have a fixed target. Instead, we trail our stop loss as the price moves in favor so that we can ride the entire trend. So the first step is to decide on the type of trend you want to capture, whether it's a short term, medium term or long term trend. Then you can trail the stop loss with the appropriate moving averages like 20 period, 50 period or 200 period moving averages respectively. And we will exit our trade only when the price crosses below these moving averages. The final method combines both these methods. You exit half your positions at the price projection level and write the rest using the trailing stop loss so that you will be able to lock in some profits and not lose money if the market reverses. Now same with the double top, you can use multiple time frames to filter for high probability double bottom setups. All you have to do is to identify a higher time frame support area, then move down to your preferred lower time frame and look for a double bottom pattern that leans against the higher time frame support level. By doing this, you can take a trade from the absolute low of the swing bottom, but do keep in mind that this is a more professional entry technique, so don't use it if you can't completely digest it. If you have understood the double top and double bottom patterns properly, then triple tops and triple bottoms are just a piece of cake. These are just extensions of the previous two patterns. The entry, exit and stop losses are the same. But what matters most is the formation of the third swing high or swing low respectively. Let's find out what these patterns signify. A triple top is a bearish reversal chart pattern that signals that the sellers are in control. The pattern starts with buyers in control as the price makes a swing high followed by a pullback. But the first sign of selling pressure appears as the price fails to break out of the prior high and the market makes a pullback again and forms a consolidation. This looks like a double top but this time instead of breaking below the neckline, the market attempts to break out higher once again and fails again. So there are three spikes visible or three failed attempts to break out higher. This looks like a triple top and is confirmed only when the price breaks below the low of the consolidation or the neckline support level. I won't be discussing the entry, stop loss and target criteria because you can follow the same rules as with the double top pattern. Keep in mind that no patterns, strategies or techniques work all the time. This includes even the triple top pattern. But the good news is that before the pattern fails, it usually leaves some clues. For instance, if the higher time frame trend is still an uptrend, then the triple top pattern formed on a lower time frame is most likely to fail. Now when talking about a triple bottom pattern, a triple bottom is a bullish reversal chart pattern and is quite the opposite of the triple top pattern and it signals that the buyers are dominant. Now the pattern begins with sellers pushing the prices down as the price makes a swing low followed by a pullback. But the first sign of buying pressure appears as the price fails to break out of the previous swing low. Now the market made another pullback and looked like a consolidation. This looks like a double bottom pattern. But instead of breaking above the neckline, the market attempts to move lower once again and fails to break the low once again. So there are three lows visible or three failed attempts to break out 
out lower. Now this looks like a triple bottom pattern and is only confirmed when the price breaks above the high of the consolidation or the neckline resistance level. The entry, stop loss and target criteria are similar to the rules of the double bottom pattern itself. Now moving to the last category of patterns, the wedges. We will start off with the rising wedge. A rising wedge is a popular bearish pattern. This pattern starts wide at the bottom and then contracts as the price moves upwards and the trading range gets smaller towards the top. This pattern forms when the price consolidates between upward sloping support and resistance lines where the slope of the support line is much more steeper than that of the resistance slope. What this implies is that the higher lows form much faster than the higher highs leading to a wedge-like formation. This also means that the selling activity is gaining more traction and the buying activity is getting weaker. Also, the contraction of the trading range from left to right indicates a weakening of the existing trading activity. But the rising wedge can be one of the most difficult chart patterns to accurately recognize and trade. While it is a consolidation formation, like most other patterns, the loss of the upside momentum on each successive swing high gives the pattern its bearish bias. However, the series of higher highs and higher lows keeps the traders guessing that the trend is still bullish. This is where the contracting range helps us the most. Moreover, to identify it as a rising wedge, the price should test the upward sloping support and resistance lines at least twice each. Now a shocking fact about rising wedge pattern is that it can be both a reversal or a continuation pattern. Now it depends on its position in the price chart. But the more important information is that regardless of the pattern being a reversal or continuation in nature, rising wedges are bearish. This is what we will focus on. The added advantage is that we can spot this pattern at the end of an uptrend or as a consolidation due to a short term profit booking during a downtrend. But actually, the bearish confirmation of the pattern does not come until the upward sloping support line is broken in a convincing fashion. Ideally, we expect the volume to decline as the prices rise and as the wedge forms and there should be an expansion or rise in volumes on the support line break which can be taken as a bearish confirmation. Now, we can also use momentum indicators like RSI or MACD to spot the shift in momentum. Anyways, when the price does break the support line convincingly, our bias is always towards selling on the breakdown. With a consolidation in prices, traders know that a big slash is on its way, so they expect a breakout either to the top or the bottom. So when the rising wedge is formed after an uptrend, it is referred to as a bearish reversal pattern, but if it is formed during a downtrend, it could mean a continuation of the down move. Now that we have learned how to identify a rising wedge, we can discuss how to trade the pattern. So I will discuss the entry methods, where to place the stop loss and how to set the targets. Now starting with the entry criteria, as it is a bearish pattern, we are only interested in the break below the upward sloping support trend line. You can take a short entry following a breakout of this level, that is you can enter at the moment when the price breaks below the support trend line or you can look to sell below the low price or even at the closing price of the breakout candle after it closes. The second method is to wait for a pullback or retest back to the breakout level and then take a short entry when the price moves lower or when the price moves below the breakout candle low. Now you are probably wondering, which one is better? Well, there is no best approach. If you enter at the break of the loss, it could be a false breakout. But if it is a real breakout, it is the best possible price you can get. Alternatively, if you wait for a close below the lows, then you will reduce the chances of a false breakout. But if the breakout is too strong, you will end up entering at a much lower price. The same is the case with waiting for a pullback or retest, which may not happen often if the market is trending strongly and as a matter of fact, you will miss out on the trade completely. So it is up to you to decide the entry strategy and continue practicing it over a large number of trades. It is always recommended to confirm the validity of the breakout using volumes and other momentum indicators. So a higher than average volume can validate a breakout most of the time as it shows the interest of the market participants and low volume breakouts are most likely to fail. Also using momentum indicators like MACD, RSI can also help you identify a true breakout. I have made videos on all these topics so you can check them out. Let's now focus our attention on the criteria for setting the stop losses. 
how to set your stop loss when trading the rising wedge pattern. Now you don't want to set your stop loss at obvious levels like support and resistance, swing highs or swing lows etc. And why is that? Because you will get stop loss hunted easily. Because these are as obvious a level to you as it is to others, including the smart money. So how do you get a proper stop loss setup? And it's very simple. As I have mentioned over and over again, your stop loss should be at a level that if crossed invalidates your trading setup. So we are trading a rising wedge pattern here and the pattern is invalid if the price breaks and closes above the top trend line resistance. So you have to keep your stop loss above this resistance level. So there are still chances of long weeks which can take out your stop loss and then move in the desired direction. So to be extra safe, you have to give your trades more breathing space by setting your stop loss some distance away from the market structure using an indicator like ATR. So you have to set your stop loss 1 ATR above the most recent swing high level. Let's learn how to set a target for the rising wedge pattern. Now there are many ways you can cash in your winners. And one of the most common approaches is to have a predetermined profit target. Now the target can be measured by taking the distance of the back of the wedge or the widest portion of the wedge from the support to the resistance level and then extending this distance down from the trend line breakout point. You can also choose to trail your stop loss until the market takes you out of the trade. Now why is this a better option? Think about this. The rising wedge pattern usually appears in a downtrending market or at the end of an uptrend. In such conditions, there is a lot of potential for the trend to continue and the only way to ride it is to trail your stop loss. Now to trail your stop loss in the best possible manner, you can use moving averages or Chandler stops and only exit the trade if the market closes above it. Moreover, it is much better if you use a combination of both the price projection method and the trailing stop loss method so that you can gauge the move using the price projection method so as to lock in part of your profits there and then ride the rest of the position using your trailing stop loss thereby not impacting your psychology and avoiding any losses due to reversals. Now moving on to the final chart pattern of this video, the falling wedge. Falling wedge chart pattern is like a counter pattern to the rising wedge. It is created when a market consolidates between two converging support and resistance lines. For a falling wedge, the support and resistance lines have to point in the downward direction or they should be sloping down and the resistance level have to be steeper than the support level. The pattern generally starts wide at the top and contracts towards the bottom as the price moves lower. This sort of price action forms a cone-like shape that slopes down as the swing highs and swing lows converge. As the price continues to slide down, it will lose momentum and it signals that the buyers are beginning to step in and are slowing the rate of the price decline. Now in contrast to patterns like symmetrical triangles, which have no definitive slope or bias, the falling wedges should slope down and we have a bullish bias. Now as with the rising wedges, the falling wedges is also one of those challenging patterns to trade. The falling wedge is seen as both a bullish continuation and a bullish reversal pattern which give rise to some confusion in the identification of the pattern. Now both scenarios contain different market conditions that must be taken into consideration. But the differentiating factor that separates the continuation and reversal pattern is the direction of the trend when the falling wedge appears. A falling wedge is a continuation pattern if it appears in an uptrend and it is a reversal pattern if it appears in a downtrend. However, this bullish bias cannot be realized or confirmed until the downward sloping resistance line breakout occurs convincingly. By convincing, I mean the volume should decline as the pattern progresses from left to right or simply the volume should contract with contracting prices, showing a weakening of the existing price trend and the breakout above the resistance line should be accompanied by higher than average volumes, indicating a rise in the interest among market participants. Now you can also make use of momentum indicators like RSI, MACD, etc. to confirm the reliability of the pattern. Now we will talk about the entry criteria. So how do you better time your entry? 
the first approach is to go long when the price breaks above the resistance trend line. All you need to do is to place a buy order above the resistance line and you will be immediately long when the price breaks out above the level. And if the breakout is real, this is one of the best prices to enter. But this is a very risky method and chances are it might be a false breakout. Now this next method is similar to the previous approach. The only difference is that you wait for the price to break and close above the trend line resistance. You can take a long entry above the breakout candle highs once the candle closes. Now this will reduce the likelihood of a false breakout. But if the price momentum is strong, you will enter your trade at a much higher price. Now if you are an experienced trader, then you can even enter the market as the price pull back or retest back to the upper trend line of the pattern. This can help you enter the trade even if you miss the breakout move and it offers a better price entry than waiting for the close of the breakout candle. But the issue with this approach is that market may not give a pullback or retest every time. So once again, you can choose the entry type that you like based on whether you are conservative or aggressive in your approach. But make sure to validate the breakout with volumes and other momentum indicators to see if there is actually an interest in the market participants to take the prices higher. Now how to set a proper stop loss so that you don't get stopped out too early. Now it doesn't matter whether you are trading breakouts or pullbacks because the concept is the same. Your stop loss must be at a location that if breached will invalidate your trading setup. This means if the market hits the stop loss, you will automatically know that you are wrong. So a stop loss below the resistance level is not a good idea. Where else then? Think about it. Where is the ideal place to set your stop loss so that if the market reaches it, you know the falling wedge pattern is invalidated. Since the pattern forms higher swing lows and if the price moves below the recent swing low or break below the downward sloping resistance trend line, then we can be sure that our analysis was wrong. So this is exactly where you need to keep your stop loss that is just below the swing low or the support level. Now you can give the price some breathing space by adding one ATR buffer below the recent swing low or the support. I hope this is clear. Now how to cash in your winners? Now one of the most common approaches is to have a predetermined profit target. Target can be measured by taking the width of the top of the wedge or the widest portion of the wedge from the support to the resistance level and then extending this distance upward from the trend line breakout point. You can also decide to trail your stop loss. Now, the trailing stop loss helps you ensure you ride the entire trend. Now, to trail your stop loss in the best possible manner, you can use moving averages or Chandler stops and only exit the trade if the market closes below it. And if you are using the moving averages, use 20, 50 or 200 period moving averages depending on whether you have a short term, medium term or long term trade objective. Moreover, it is much better if you use a combination of these two methods so that you can gauge the potential of the move beforehand using the projection method so as to lock in part of your profits there and then ride the rest of the position using the trailing stop loss method thereby not impacting your psychology and avoiding any potential losses due to reversals. Now that is all the major reversal patterns in a single video. In the previous two episodes, we have discussed the most important continuation and reversal patterns, how to identify them and how to trade them in a very detailed manner. When dealing with both continuation and reversal patterns, we have a clear idea or maybe we have a directional bias towards where the breakout will happen. That is in the case of continuation patterns, we will look to trade in the direction of the previous trend before consolidation. And for reversal patterns, we will look to initiate trades in the opposite direction of the prior market trend. But the third type of pattern that we are going to discuss doesn't have a directional bias associated with it when it comes to the breakout or the trade direction. Or in simple terms, the breakout of the pattern can be in either direction and we cannot judge the direction of the breakout before it happens. This category of chart patterns is called as neutral chart patterns or bilateral chart patterns. Since we cannot be sure of a possible breakout direction, these patterns can be dangerous because of false breakouts. 
more often than not you will find yourself entering a breakout above or below the pattern consolidation only to see yourself fall prey to a false breakout i have already made videos on breakouts and false breakouts in my price action course you can check those videos to know more in this part we are going to discuss three bilateral patterns how they work and how to take trades including the entry targets and stop losses now the three bilateral patterns under discussion are number 1 the symmetrical triangles followed by the symmetrical expanding triangles or broadening triangles and finally channel patterns that is rising channel and falling channel patterns if these series of videos are helping you become better at trading then please do like and share this video and support our efforts to build a healthy trading ecosystem so let us start our discussion with symmetrical triangles We have talked about ascending and descending triangles. The ascending triangle indicates a weakening of sellers with a contraction in volatility from left to right of the pattern, while a descending triangle signals a weakening of buyers and a decline in volatility, which leads to a strong breakout. Now, the working of a symmetrical triangle chart pattern is quite similar to these two triangle patterns. The symmetrical triangle is also a volatility contraction pattern but here we are not sure who is the weak player. A contraction in volatility means that the price volatility in the market is shrinking and it is a strong signal that the market is likely to break out soon. Now before we get into the breakout part let's first learn how to identify a symmetrical triangle pattern in the charts. I hope you are familiar with the fact that for an ascending triangle there is an ascending trend line support and a flat resistance line while for a descending triangle there is a descending trend line resistance and a flat support line now when it comes to a symmetrical triangle and as the name suggests the sides of the triangle slope equally which means the slope of the ascending trend line support and the descending trend line resistance happens to have the same slope now it is within these trend lines that the actual consolidation of prices happens and both of these trend lines meet at a common point called the apex now the triangle should comprise of at least two lower highs and two higher lows each to be considered as a valid symmetrical triangle pattern the pattern looks like a funnel with the price squeezing from left towards the right with a contraction in volatility which is associated with weakening of candlesticks and price action Now what does the price action indicate it simply means that neither the buyers nor the sellers are interested in buying or selling this is evident from the lower highs forming the upper trend line resistance showing a lack of buying pressure while the higher lows into the lower trend line support signals a decline in selling pressure as you can see the pattern started with big swings which got shorter and shorter as the pattern progressed the beauty of volatility contraction is that price cannot be squeezed forever at some point it must break out and when it happens it offers tremendous returns now i have seen many experts believe that if a stock is rallying before the formation of a symmetrical triangle it will eventually break out to the upside on the other hand if a stock falls before a symmetrical triangle consolidation forms it should continue its decline after the breakout now both of these assumptions are not right These triangles offers little or no indication regarding the direction in which the stock or the index will eventually break out. Keep in mind that there is a lack of volume and price movement which gives rise to a symmetrical triangle pattern and as a result it is impossible to assess the direction of the breakout. Another common mistake traders make is chasing the breakout of a symmetrical triangle pattern only to get trapped in a false breakout. So how do we eliminate this mistake? A great trading tool that you can use for identifying breakouts is volume. Real breakouts usually occur with high trading volumes and high volatility, while fake breakouts are usually associated with low volumes and look more like a range than a breakout. Since the levels of the triangles are inclined, it sometimes brings the price outside the frame of the triangle. This usually gets traders tempted and they assume that there is a breakout on the chart. So always make sure to confirm the breakouts. Another important point that you can keep in mind is that the closer the price gets to the apex of the pattern and the tighter the price consolidation becomes, the greater the chances of a real breakout and the price will quickly move in favor of your trade. 
Moving on, we will now focus on how to trade this pattern. That is how to time your entry, set your stop loss and determine targets or exits. Let's start with the entry criteria first. Now wherever this pattern forms, we have to consider two scenarios. First is a breakout above the descending trend line resistance and the second scenario is a breakout below the ascending trend line support level. Let's say the price breaks the upper trend line resistance level. Then you have four possible long entries available. The first approach is very aggressive and the idea is to go long as soon as the price breaks above the resistance trend line. And all you need to do is to place a limit buy order above the resistance level and you will be immediately long when the price breaks out above the level. And if the breakout is real, this is one of the best prices to enter. But this method is very risky and there are high chances that it might be a false breakout. The second method is similar to the previous approach. The only difference is that you wait for the price to break and close above the descending trend line resistance. You can enter long above the breakout candle highs once the candle closes. This method reduces the likelihood of a false breakout but if the price momentum is strong then you will be probably entering at a much higher price. Now if you have missed both these entries then you can even enter the market as the price pulls back or retest the resistance line of the pattern. This method can help you enter a trade even if you miss the breakout move. In this method we have to wait for the prices to form a primary pullback or even retest the resistance turn support level and then move in the direction of the breakout. So you can take a long position when the price begins to move higher. The retest entry offers a better price than waiting for the close of the breakout candle. Also keep in mind that pullbacks and retest are usually associated with smaller candles. But the issue with this approach is that the market may not always give a pullback or retest, especially if there is a strong momentum backing the price move. So I leave it up to you to decide the entry type that you like based on whether you are conservative or aggressive in your approach. Also make sure to validate the breakout with volumes and other indicators to see if there is actually an interest among the market participants to take the prices higher. The entry techniques for a breakdown below the ascending trendline support are also similar but here our bias is bearish and we will look to enter a short position. So you can either choose to go short on the breakdown or you can wait for a primary pullback or retest back to the support turned resistance level and then go short when the price starts to decline lower. But make sure to validate the breakout first using volumes and other momentum indicators to save yourself from being trapped in a false breakout. Now how to set a proper stop loss so that you don't get stopped out too early. Now the concept is simple. Your stop loss must be at a location that if reached will invalidate your trading setup. This means that if the market hits the stop loss, you will automatically know that your analysis was wrong. So if you talk about the stop loss placement for a breakout above the resistance level, do you think setting your stop loss just below the resistance level is a good idea? Well, I don't think so, considering the chances of fake outs or even deep wicks. So where else should you place it? Think about it. Where is the ideal place to set your stop loss so that if the market reaches it, you know the breakout is invalidated. Now since the pattern forms higher swing lows and if the price moves below the recent swing low and forms a lower low, then we can be sure that our analysis was wrong. So it is exactly the place where you need to keep your stop loss. That is just below the recent swing low. You can give the price some breathing space by adding one ATR buffer below the recent swing low to compensate for the deep stop loss hunting wicks. Now the same idea applies to a breakdown below the ascending trend line support. You can place your stop loss just above the most recent swing high level formed or you can give one ATR buffer above the swing high level to be extra safe. Now where to exit your winning trades for maximum profits? You may already be familiar that there are two techniques that you can consider the trailing stop loss method and the price projection method. Now how to exit your trade at the price projection level. Now price projection techniques helps to project where the price momentum will exhaust itself. So here's how it works for a symmetrical triangle pattern. All you have to do is to take the distance between the highest and lowest points of the symmetrical triangle that is the widest distance of the pattern. 
then depending on the breakout direction copy and paste this distance or project this distance at the breakout point for example in case of a bullish breakout project this distance to be above the resistance level from the breakout point and for a bearish breakdown project the same distance to be below the support level from the breakdown point now this will give you the price projection or the expected target level now the concept of trailing stop loss is that we have no idea how long the trend will last so we will trail our stop loss to ride the trend as far as possible to lock in gains as the market moves in our favor so how do you actually trail your stop loss well you can use an indicator like a moving average for example you can trail your stop loss using a 20 period 50 period or even 200 period moving average depending upon whether you are considering a short term medium term or long term position in the market this means you will hold your position until the market breaks and closes above or below the moving average depending on the direction of the breakout a more robust technique is if you make a trailing stop loss and price projection combo that is you combine both these techniques this means if the market moves in your favor but it has not reached your price projection level you can use the moving average to lock in your profits so even if there is a sudden reversal you still protect what you have and do not give everything back to the market moving on to the second category of neutral patterns this particular pattern is known by different names be it a symmetrical expanding triangle or a broadening triangle pattern or a broadening bottom or top pattern etc the pattern looks exactly like a mirror reflection of a symmetrical triangle pattern now instead of the price squeezing from the left towards the right it actually expands with each swing this is one of the reason why this pattern is tougher to trade than other chart patterns as the lows and highs get taken out one by one it is also called a megaphone pattern because of the expanding shape of the consolidation now when it comes to the identification of this pattern the pattern can be formed during an uptrend or a downtrend and it is referred to as a broadening top when it is formed during an uptrend and a broadening bottom when it is formed during a downtrend when the two trend lines connecting the widening highs and lows of the prices diverge from each other it is an indicating of a broadening triangle pattern it shows the nervousness and indecisiveness of traders even though the price action is evident after each price swing there is no clear dominance by a single player that is the buyers and sellers are trying to force their dominance but each attempt is countered resulting in a state of indecision moreover there should be at least two price swings along the sloping trend lines that is there should be at least two higher highs into the ascending trend line resistance and two lower highs into the descending trend line support to consider it as a valid pattern now similar to a symmetrical triangle pattern in the broadening triangle pattern too the breakout determines the direction of future price movement please note that there are a few categories of broadening patterns be it broadening wedges broadening tops with a flat support line or broadening bottoms with a flat resistance line but i will not be discussing these patterns because most of these broadening price action patterns occur rarely in the market so i will always urge you to follow three to four strong patterns rather than running after each and every pattern on the charts the more focused you become the better the results will be now let's talk about the trading criteria and let's start with the entry techniques first as i have just mentioned the breakout determines the future price direction and dominance of a single player in the market this pattern does not come with a directional bias so we have to focus completely on the breakouts to determine our position so it all comes down to identifying a real breakout as discussed earlier one of the factors that will help determine a proper breakout is the volume so a higher than average volume can be a good indication of a probable breakout moreover you can make use of momentum indicators like rsi macd etc to validate a breakout from a false breakout so with that in mind let's talk about all the possible entries when a breakout happens above the upper trend line resistance you can take a long entry as soon as the price breaks above the resistance as this will give you a good entry price but the downside is that it could be a false breakout and you could get trapped 
So a better alternative would be to wait for the breakout candle to close above the resistance trend line and then enter at the opening of the next candle or above the high of the breakout candle. Now the problem with this approach is that if the breakout is associated with a good momentum then you will find yourself buying at a very higher price. In addition to these, you can take a long position after a price pullback or retest back to the ascending trend line. As you may all know, a pullback or a retest is usually associated with weak candles. So you can take a long trade when the price begins to move in the direction of the breakout once again. The advantage of these methods is that you could get into a trade even if you miss the breakout. But on the downside, a pullback or retest does not happen every time, particularly if there was a strong price momentum during the breakout. Now the same entry methods are applicable in case the price breaks down below the lower trend line support of the pattern. In that case, you can take a short entry on the breakdown or after the breakdown candle closes below the support level. You can also enter a trade after a pullback or retest to the lower trend line support. Now talking about stop losses, placing stop losses for this pattern is actually a hard task. If you were to go by the general idea of placing the stop loss, it can be set below the top resistance line or below the lower support line in case of a bullish breakout and on the other hand a stop loss could be placed above the lower support line or above the upper trend line resistance for a bearish breakdown. But think about it, one of the stop loss is too tight and any price swing with long wicks can take out your stop loss while the other stop loss is too wide which will give you a poor risk to reward. So what will we do? One way to counter this issue is to place your stop loss in the middle of the pattern that is at the center of the widest point of the pattern. So if you are very aggressive with your stop loss you could even place the stop loss with respect to the breakout candle provided you give enough breathing room for the price action to happen. This can be achieved if you place your stop loss by adding some buffer with anywhere from 1 to 3 times the ATR value. Now finally we will be talking about the targets. For this pattern I won't be really interested in trading my targets. I am satisfied with the projected targets. So you can set two targets using the price projection method. The first target would be equal to the distance of the smallest swing between the top and bottom trend lines. This distance is further projected above or below the trend line depending on whether it was a breakout or a breakdown. The second target level will be equal to the distance of the widest swing between the trend lines which is projected from the breakout point. Now let's move on to the final type of bilateral pattern which are channel patterns namely the rising and falling channels. The channel pattern is also known as the price channel. The formation of the pattern is quite interesting and it is related to market trends. You can learn all you need to know about market trends in my price action course. Now let's talk about the rising channel first. The rising channel is formed by two lines, a bottom trend line support and an upper trend channel line resistance. So clearly the price is in an uptrend and as you may already know during an uptrend price forms higher swing highs and higher swing lows. And when we connect all the swing lows together using a line, we get the uptrend line which will act as a support for the prices. And if we connect all the higher highs, it will give us the trend channel line which will act as a resistance level for the future prices. Moreover, we need at least two price swings on each of these lines to consider it as a trend line and to confirm it as a valid line, we need at least three swings on each of them. Now another important thing to keep in mind is that the lines should be parallel to each other or in simple terms the slope of both the upper and lower lines should almost be equal and if the slopes are different we know what it means right it will be a different price action altogether and it will form a rising wedge pattern. Let's now talk about the falling channel pattern. The existing trend is a downtrend with lower highs and higher lows. By connecting all the lower highs together you will get a downtrend line which will act as a resistance level for the future price movements. On the other hand if you connect all the lower lows you will get a trend channel line which will function as a support level for prices. Also keep in mind that the slopes of both these lines should be almost equal or in simple terms the line should be parallel. Now let's talk about how to trade a rising channel pattern. So you can take two types of trades when it comes to rising channel patterns. 
you can either take breakout trades when the price breaks out of the channel or else you can trade the impulse price swings in the direction of the existing trend from the trend line. When it comes to breakout trading, the rising channel pattern is a bilateral pattern, meaning that a breakout can happen in either direction. But what I have observed is that the slope of the channel to some extent gives us the information on whether it will be a breakout or a breakdown. Let me explain. A channel with a very high slope or a very steep price action will mostly break down below the support trend line. While a channel with a medium or lower slope will have equal chances of breaking out or breaking down. Anyway, this is just an observation, but we should enter a trade only after a breakout has happened. Let's say the price broke below the support trend line. Now, if you are very aggressive, you can take a short position as soon as the price breaks below the support trend line. But this is risky as it could end up being a false breakout and you will get trapped. So it is always ideal to wait for the breakout candle to close below the trend line and then enter on the opening of the next candle or below the low of the breakout candle. Now the downside is that if the breakdown is strong, you will end up selling at a much lower price. So yet another method would be when the price pulls back or retest back to the trend line. So both the pullback and retest are associated with small bodied candles. So when the price starts to move lower after the pullback or retest, you can take a short entry. Sometimes there could even be a price build up near the support trend line, which is a very good signal that the price would break down lower and it provides a much better reward to risk because of a tighter stop loss. Now all these breakdown entry techniques are applicable even if the price manages to break out above the resistance trend line. In such a scenario, you will look for long trading opportunities either after the breakout and close above the resistance or after a build up near the resistance trend channel line or even after a pullback or retest back to the trend channel line after the breakout. Now one of the most important factors to check out is the volume. So if you want to know more about analyzing volumes, you can check it out in my free price action playlist. Anyway, there should be a higher than average volume during breakouts. You can even use momentum indicators like RSI to validate the breakout. Moving on, let's learn how to place your stop loss. We will discuss the stop loss for a breakdown below the support level. The stop loss of the channel pattern will depend upon the width of the channel. If the channel is too narrow, then we can think about placing the stop loss just above the upper trend channel line. But if the channel is too wide, then we need to think about a different stop loss because if we place it above the trend channel line like before, the reward to risk ratio will be severely affected. So what can be done? For a breakdown entry, we can place the stop loss just above the midpoint of the channel from where the breakout happened. But if you have taken a short entry after a build up near the support trend line, then you can keep your stop loss just above the build up or consolidation. And finally, if you have taken a position after a pullback or retest, then you can set your stop loss above the highest week of the pullback or retest candles with some buffer for price action. Now in case of a breakout above the resistance trend line, similar stop loss conditions can be applied there also. But in this case, we will be placing the stop loss below the midpoint of the channel from the breakout point if you have taken a breakout entry. Or you can place the stop loss below the consolidation for a breakout after build up entry. And finally, you can set your stop loss with some buffer below the lowest week of the pullback or retest candles for a pullback or retest entry. Now let's discuss the targets and as always we can follow three methods price projection, trailing stop loss and a combination of both. For price projection we follow a price exhaustion concept. For a channel pattern we measure the distance between the upper and lower trend lines and project this distance above or below the line depending on the direction of the breakout. This will give you your projected price target. Now one interesting observation of the rising channel pattern when the price breaks down below the support trend line is that all the previous swing levels will act as price action areas. So you will have to closely watch what type of price action is occurring and then decide whether to hold your trades for more profitability or just exit your positions. Now the other method is to use a trailing stop loss using moving averages of different periods depending on the type of trading style that you follow. The central idea of this concept is that when a price breakout or breakdown 
forms a channel or simply a consolidation, there is a good chance that the trend will continue for a longer period and you can benefit enormously if you trail your stop loss. You will exit the trade only when the price crosses the moving average. So for short term trends, you can use 20 period moving average. For medium term trends, you can use 50 period moving averages. And for longer term trends, you can use 100 or 200 moving averages. But it is always a good practice if you use a combination of both price projection and trailing stop loss methods so that you will be able to lock into profits whatever the outcome is. Now let's look at the second method of trading a rising channel pattern. This idea is only valid if the channel form is wide enough. That is there should be enough points between the support and resistance line. The idea here is to trade the impulse move or simply to trade in the direction of the trend. All you have to do is to look for buying opportunities from the trend line support level to ride the impulse moves because impulse moves are associated with stronger momentum candles and you will be trading along with the market price flow. You can also make use of bullish reversal candlesticks like bullish pin bars from the support level to take a long entry. You can place your stop loss below the support trend line with ample buffer or below the lowest wick of the rejection candle from the support level. Your target will obviously be the resistance trend channel line. You can also trade the correction move from the uptrend line but I don't generally recommend doing so. Now let's briefly discuss the trading criteria for a falling channel pattern. Now similar to a rising channel, you can take two types of trades when it comes to falling channel patterns. You can either take breakout trades when the price breaks out of the channel or you can trade the impulse price swings in the direction of the existing downtrend from the trend line. When it comes to breakout trading, the falling channel line is a bilateral pattern indicating that breakout can happen in either direction. But same as before, the slope of the channel to some extent gives us the information on whether it will be a breakout or a breakdown. So a falling channel with a very high negative slope or a very steep price action will most probably break out above the resistance trend line. While a channel with a medium or lower slope will have equal chances of breaking out or breaking down. Anyway, this is just an observation, but you should enter the trade only after the breakout has been confirmed. Let's say the price broke above the resistance trend line. Now, if you're a very aggressive trader, you can take a long position as soon as the price breaks above the resistance trend line. But this is a risky business as it could end up being a false breakout and you will be trapped. So it is always ideal to wait for the breakout candle to close above the trend line and then enter on the opening of the next candle or above the high of the breakout candle. The downside is that the breakout could be too strong and you will end up buying at a much higher price. So yet another method would be when the price pulls back or retests to the trend line. So when the price starts to move higher after the pullback or retest of the consolidation, you can take a long entry. Sometimes there could even be a price build up near the resistance trend line, which is a very good signal that the price could break out higher and it provides a much better reward to risk because of a tighter stop loss. All these breakout entry techniques are applicable even if the price manages to break below the support trend channel line. In such a scenario, we will look for short trading opportunities either after the breakout and close below the support trend channel line or after a build up near the support line or even after a pullback or retest back to the trend channel line after the breakdown. Now one of the most important factors to check out is the volume. You can validate a real breakout using higher than average volumes during the breakout and you can even use momentum indicators like RSI, MACD etc to validate the breakout. Moving on, let's look at how to place your stop losses. So we will discuss the stop loss for a breakout above the resistance level. As mentioned earlier, the stop loss of the channel pattern will depend upon the width of the channel. If the channel is too narrow, we can think about placing the stop loss just below the lower trend channel line. But if the channel is too wide, then we need to think about a different stop loss because if we place the stop loss below the trend channel line like before, the reward to risk will be poor. So for a breakout entry, you can place the stop loss just below the midpoint of the channel from where the breakout happened. But in case you have taken a long entry after a build up near the resistance trend line, then you can keep your stop loss just below the build up or consolidation. 
and finally if you have taken a position after a pullback or retest you can set your stop loss below the lowest wick of pullback or retest candles with some buffer for ample price movement now in case of a breakout below the support trend channel line similar stop loss conditions can be applied there also but in this case we will be placing the stop loss above the midpoint of the channel from the breakdown point if you have taken a short entry or you can place the stop loss above the consolidation for a breakout after build up entry and finally you can even set your stop loss with some buffer above the highest wick of pullback or retest candles for a pullback or retest entry now finally let's discuss the targets setting the targets can be done the same way as with the rising channel pattern it could be price projection trailing stop loss or a combination of both so please do refer the previous session if you have any doubts now let's look at the second method of trading the falling channel pattern as mentioned earlier the idea is only valid if the channel formed is wide enough there should be enough points available between the support and resistance trend lines now the idea here is to trade the impulse move or simply to trade in the direction of the existing market trend so all you have to do is to look for selling opportunities from the trend line resistance level to ride the impulse move because the impulse moves are associated with stronger momentum candles and you will be trading along with the market price flow you can also make use of bearish reversal candlesticks like bearish pin bars from the resistance line to take a short entry you should place your stop loss above the resistance trend line with ample buffer or above the highest wick of the rejection candle from the resistance line your target for this case will obviously be the support trend channel line so you can also trade the correction move if you want from the lower trend channel line but i generally don't recommend doing it now there are a hell lot of other patterns that you can find in the markets from rounding bottoms and tops or saucer patterns followed by diamond tops and diamond bottoms v tops v bottoms broadening wedges island reversal patterns etc the patterns that i have discussed over the course of three videos are more than sufficient to trade profitably in the market if you follow them correctly now it doesn't mean that all the trades will become profitable but the probability of your trading success can be vastly improved moreover the time frames that you select for trading these patterns also form an integral variable for the success of these patterns and mostly the win rate of chart patterns tends to improve quite a lot if you trade them at higher time frames we went from discussing continuation chart patterns followed by reversal chart patterns and finally we have talked about neutral or bilateral chart patterns now i am assuming you know how to identify and trade these chart patterns in the market but one of the hardest things about chart patterns is spotting them on charts across different stocks and indices think about it chart patterns show up in different time frames from intraday time frames to daily or weekly or even monthly time frames and that too across different stocks and indices so as a trader you have two jobs first you have to identify suitable patterns of your liking maybe you like trading triangle patterns or maybe you like pennants and flags and so on so identify the pattern of your liking i will suggest you follow two to a maximum of three reliable patterns rather than going after every pattern you find in the books trust me it will do more harm than good and if you ask me my personal favorites then i would say triangles rectangles channels and sometimes i even bet on head and shoulder patterns also now the next step is to filter out the good trades from the not so reliable ones but trust me It is an exhausting job to look for chart patterns over each and every stock, draw them, analyze them, and finally filter them for trading. So, in this video, I will discuss three methods that you can use to spot chart patterns in the market. So, watch the video till the end because the methods for finding the patterns get easier as we proceed through the video. Before we discuss the different methods, let me make something clear up front. Let me explain the reasons why spotting chart patterns is a difficult task. Number 1, most charts are uneven and noisy. Most stocks and index chart consist of deep wicks, price gaps, false breakouts, overshoots and undershoots, all resulting in making the pattern determination a hard task. This is particularly true when we move to the lower time frames. What this means is that on a higher time frame like daily, weekly, etc, the chart pattern determination is fairly easy 
and it forms slowly so that we get enough time to plan our trades appropriately. But this is not the case in lower time frames like 5 minutes or 15 minutes or even 30 minute charts where the chart patterns get formed very often but it is always tricky to mistake one pattern from another as it happens quickly and often we won't be able to plan our trades adequately. Another point to keep in mind is that the more fluid the market price movements, the easier it is to spot these patterns. The point that I want to make is that Forex markets, which are open all week long, are one of the best markets for pattern trading. Unlike Indian indices like Nifty or Bank Nifty, where there are big price gaps and backlashes due to aftermarket sentiments. Due to this very reason, you can get good entries and exits due to regular price moves in Forex, unlike stocks or indices, which can sometimes affect your trades due to unpredictable price gaps. But most of us like trading in stocks and indices, so it is important that we identify the pattern correctly and plan our trades beforehand. So let's discuss the very first method of doing this. The first method uses the inbuilt trading view indicators for spotting chart patterns. This feature is only available in trading view charts, so make sure you have at least a free account in trading view. All you have to do is to select the chart of your liking, be it a stock or an index or a currency pair, and then select the time frame that you intend to trade the pattern in. So if you are an intraday trader, select an intraday time frame anywhere between 3 minutes to 30 minutes or if you are a swing trader go with a much higher time frame like 4 hours or 1 day time frame. Once you are done with these steps, go to the indicator section on the top toolbar section of trading view, click on it and as you can see on the left hand side there are different options like favorites, community scripts, my scripts etc and you need to select the technical section. And once you do that, you will find a lot of indicators to choose from. But the ones that we are looking for are related to chart patterns. On the top section of this pop-up, you can see multiple options like indicators, strategies, volume profiles, etc. So click on the one that says Auto. Now as soon as you scroll down, you will be able to see most of the chart patterns that we have already discussed. From flags, pennants, rectangles, both bullish and bearish to double and triple tops and double and triple bottoms, to triangles, and finally, we have head and shoulders and inverted head and shoulder patterns. Now, you might be wondering, where are the ascending, descending, and symmetrical triangle patterns? Don't worry, because all the triangle pattern variants are included under the same indicator. But unfortunately, this indicator section actually lacks patterns like channels, broadening wedges and triangles, etc. The next step, is to click on the pattern that you want to check on the chart. Let us say I want to check triangle patterns, then I will simply click on the triangle patterns and if we zoom out a little, you will be able to spot all the triangle patterns which are formed. And as you can see, there is no triangle formation as of now, but there was a triangle formed some time back which gave decent enough returns. Even though the indicator plots the patterns automatically, you are the one who is ultimately in control. So in order to change the parameters, just go to the settings of the indicator and click on it. Now a pop-up appears which gives a parameter called permissible deviation and by default it is set to 10. And if you want to know what this is, just place the cursor over the eye symbol just to the right of the parameter. Now this particular parameter is used to determine how accurate the pattern form should be. So if you reduce the permissible deviation to let's say 0 or even 5, then the number of triangle patterns displayed by the indicator reduces. And if you increase the deviation to let's say 25 or 40, then the number of patterns displayed will be more, but some of them will be inaccurate. So either stay with the default value, or just play with the numbers and see what works best for you. Now just below the deviation parameter, you will find a tick box saying, in progress. Once again, move the cursor over the eye symbol. What it is asking you is that, do you want the indicator to spot incomplete patterns or those patterns which are in the process of formation? Now, it is most important to always turn this checkbox on. Only then you will be able to track the upcoming patterns and plan and trade them with ease. And another thing is that when you move from a higher time frame to a lower time frame, 
the number of patterns spotted increases, but the accuracy of the patterns working out in your favor actually reduces. Now let us look at one more example. This time we will consider a double top pattern. And as you can see, once we have clicked on the pattern, it automatically displays all the potential double top formations. And another interesting thing to note is that this indicator will also give you the projected profit target beforehand. We know that the projected target is equal to the height of the double top pattern from the neckline to the top. Now this is exactly the target being displayed. Now let's select the setting icon of this indicator. And as you can see, there are more options available like the trend height, second top, and finally the permissible deviation. Now the trend height parameter is asking you for the minimum height of the prior uptrend. Since we know that double top is a trend reversal pattern, particularly a bearish trend reversal pattern. So on a strong uptrend, a double top could be a minor retracement while during a weak uptrend, it could be the start of a potential reversal. So play with the values to find the best combination. Now the next parameter is the second top, which means where do you want the second top to be formed? Do you want it exactly at the same height or higher or lower? Depending on this parameter, different double tops will be displayed on the chart. Now the final parameter is the permissible deviation, which refers to the extent to which the second top should vary from the first top. Now more this deviation, the more results will be displayed by the indicator but with a lower accuracy. So try to maintain a tight deviation and always make sure to tick the in progress box to display ongoing pattern formations. So it is clear that different patterns have different settings or parameters. So it is your job now to select the indicator based on the pattern of your liking and fine tune the parameters to achieve the best results. Now this method works well. It helps to identify patterns faster on different time frames and on different charts. But it is still a manual job and let's say you need to check all the nifty hundred stocks for potential chart patterns. How long do you think this process will take? Maybe hours, right? So this is exactly the drawback with these trading view indicators as it has limited applications shows lesser results on the chart because sometimes the indicator can be seen missing out on some of the patterns so it is less reliable. So how to counter this problem of finding all the patterns on different charts on different time frames. Now one of the great contender for this spot is our method number two which is top stock research pattern scanner. This is an automatic screener that looks for chart patterns. Once you're in the website go to the option that says pre-screened and a drop down menu appears. From the drop down select chart patterns. This will take you to the chart pattern screens and when you scroll down you get a lot of patterns from double and triple tops, double and triple bottoms, head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders, triangle patterns but unlike trading view chart patterns indicators here you get the variance of triangle patterns sorted under different sections followed by rectangles and channels. But here also a few patterns are missing like flags, pennants, wedges, broadening patterns etc. But I think this is more than enough because I majorly focus on triangles, channels, rectangles and sometimes head and shoulder patterns. So if you are someone who is interested in the patterns not mentioned in this screener then you can skip to the next section of the video. But trust me this scanner will make life easier for you. As you can see, each pattern has subsections based upon different trading periods like short term, medium term and long term. And under each subsection, there are different time frames from 5 minutes to daily through monthly. Now depending on your trading style, that is how long you intend to hold a position and what time frame you trade on, select an option that suits your requirement. So it may be a short term trade on a 15 minutes time frame or a medium term trade on a 2 hour time frame or even a long term trade on a daily or weekly time frame. So once you have fixed the duration and time frame, select it on the chart pattern you wish to scan for. And once you click on it, you will get a list of stocks that satisfies the criteria. But in the free version, you will only get a maximum of 3 results and if you want more results, you need to purchase the premium plan 
which cost around 2000 rupees for an year but i suggest you use the free version for a while and see if you really need it now let's get back to the discussion once the result comes up you get to see all the necessary details regarding the pattern namely the prices at which the pattern formation took place this is particularly useful because it helps you check for the pattern in the charts quite easily as you already know the price points to look for but there is already a built-in chart feature in the screener you can find this to the extreme right on the table once you click on the icon it will take you to the chart which is by default a line chart which shows the pattern's necessary price point with orange stars which makes it easier to spot you can change the charts to candlestick by simply selecting from the drop down menu on top you even get the option to change the time frames and also the periods under consideration you can also find some useful indicators like volumes moving averages rsi fibonacci etc which you can make use of or else you can always go back to your preferred charting tool like trading view which is much more powerful and easier to operate on so this is how you can use this scanner for spotting potential chart patterns you can check all other pattern screens in the same manner also keep in mind that this scanner will only scan for ongoing patterns and it will not show any data of previous patterns formed which is necessary for back testing now the drawback that i found out was that top stock research is not flexible enough to sort which category of stocks to consider for example i can't just run a scan on only nifty 50 or nifty 100 stocks due to this the scan result can sometimes come out to be penny stocks or small gaps which is very risky and illiquid also it lacks some good patterns but it is somewhat compensated by the pattern breakout scans which give result of those patterns which have just broken out of the consolidation range okay now let's get on to the final method which revolves around screeners itself but here you have more control i'm talking about charting and zeroda streak both these are powerful screeners which are easy to use as there is no need to learn any custom codes but you still need to input the logic that you want to run on the chart but this process is quite easy and user friendly let me talk about charting first one advantage with charting is that it has been around for a while so most of the chart pattern screens are already available So all you have to do is to search for the particular chart pattern that you want to scan on the chart. Now how should you do this? I will explain. In the top of the home page of charting, you will find a screener menu. Just click on that option. Now a lot of scans just show up from fundamental scans to top loud to candlestick pattern scans, but the one we are looking for are chart pattern scans. But we won't find any in this section. So what you can do is that you can search for the required scan. Let's say I want to scan for a descending triangle pattern. Just type it and hit search. A large number of scans show up. Now, which one to select? Usually the ones shown at the start of the results are the most loud scans. So, always try to stick with the first top 10 scans. For now, let me just click on the first result and it will take me to another page where I can see the logic written in simple and understandable manner. Now if you notice the first line says stock passes all of the below filters in cash segment. Now this is where you can filter out stocks based on your requirement. All you have to do is to click on the word before segment which in this case is cash and you will see a drop down list of all the available segments that you can choose from. So if you want only those stocks from future segment or only from nifty 100 or nifty 500 Just select it and move down the cursor to the run scan button and click on it. A new scan will run and it will give us the required short listed stocks under the segment that we have considered. You can analyze every chart by clicking on the stock name, but I'm not really big fan of charting's charting tool, so I would rather do my analysis on trading view or my trading terminal. Now, if you have noticed the charting free version data is delayed by some 15 minutes so in ready chart pattern trading opportunities using the free version of charting won't really work out because the signals come late but if you are someone who is into swing trading or someone who uses end of the day data then this is not a big deal if the data is delayed 
Also, other features like alerts are only available on the premium version where you can set a lot of alerts for the setup you are looking for. But I don't feel like you should pay money for premium version because first of all the charting is poor and you have to run the scans manually for new stocks and you can't do an automated trading and so on. Now that brings us to our next screener come strategy duster come algo trading site by streak which is a part of the Zeroda ecosystem. You need to have an account with any of the following brokers. I already have an account with Zeroda so I will log in with Zeroda. And once you log in, you will be welcomed with a neat home page where you can see a discover section with the well-performing strategies. But for now, we are only interested in scanners. So on the top, click on the option that says scanners and a drop down appears. Just click on the discover option and it will take us to a new page. And as you scroll down, you will be able to see a lot of custom scans. Now we will have to look for chart pattern scans. For that, Click on the search scanner box on the left side. Then you can search for the pattern that you like. But the problem with streak is that there aren't much chart pattern scans available. A few of those already available scans includes triangle patterns, double tops, double bottoms, triple bottoms, rectangle patterns and that is very much it. So the only way to get other patterns is to make them by your own. You can do this by going to create new on the right side panel or you can even find this on the top scanners drop down which goes by the name create scanners. Just click on any of them and you will be taken to a new scanner creation page. It gives you the option to select the segment of stocks that you want to run the scan on. Now the interesting thing is that you can even scan options contracts of different expiries. Now the next option is to select the time frame that you want to run the scan for. You get time frames from 1 minute to 1 day. The next option is to choose the chart type. You can select between candlesticks and Heikenashi. Then there is a conditions section where we will enter the required conditions for the pattern. So what I recommend is that you go to charting, search for the pattern you wish to trade, then select the most loud scan of that particular pattern, copy or screenshot the code logic and then come back to streak and fill the conditions into the condition section and once you're done give it a name and run the scan right now i don't have a premium plan for streak so i can't run a scan but if you have a regular or ultimate plan you can run a large number of scans every day and you can even do a lot more than that you can backtest most of your trading strategies analyze them and even trade these strategies virtually using paper trading or you can do real-time trading using your broker. I think it is a value for money, so you can check it out. But this is not a recommendation or promotion. I'm talking based on my experience because I have used this for backtesting my strategies and paper trading automatically before I trade with real money. So I think that is all the three methods that I wanted to share. All of them have their own pros and cons, so try all of them and choose the one that works well for you and if you have enjoyed the video please don't forget to like and share also make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable the bell icon so that you won't miss out on any upcoming videos i will see you guys with another video till then bye